I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I want to thank all of you for coming out uh, on what's not a terribly pleasant night. And I'm very pleased to say we do have a quorum, so your journey here was not wasted. Uh, we will have the roll call. Doreen? Rachel Henriksen? Here. Roger Beeley? Here. Robin Saunders? Here. Richard Duperry? Jennifer Ladd? Here. Rick Meinking? Here. Thank you. Uh, now an approval of the minutes of January 27, 2020. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any comments? Any amend amendments? Uh, just, Roger. Just one um, regarding um, Eastern Village. Um, there was a discussion about eliminating a building. I think it might have been either you, Rachel, or I'm not sure who, who suggested it, but one of the things that I suggested is that we take some of the units, the, you know, the floors off of that one. And it's just the way it's worded in there. It, it appears that I'm the one that suggested, re, you know, eliminating the building. Are you saying you didn't? No, I didn't. Some, somebody else did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be blamed for that. <laughs> uh, Doreen, could you simply remove that? sentence and if it becomes an issue later on we will double check on the uh, recordings okay thank you um, we have before us uh, the first item is a consent item the cottages at Sawyer LLC requests a final subdivision re review for 98 Sawyer Road assesses map R 59 lot 8 C Jamel all right thank you uh, so the applicants in front of the board tonight uh, with a final subdivision plan uh, for the 64 lot 92 unit subdivision along Sawyer Road. Uh, after a thorough uh, review process, the board did move this to a consent item uh, for tonight's agenda. So the applicant has provided subdivision sheets uh, for tonight's review with the understanding that the remaining detailed plan sheets uh, will need to be revised at a later date. Uh, so staff did have a few remaining comments in regards to the subdivision sheets, but has incorporated these into a draft motion as conditions of approval uh, for the board's consideration. I'll stop there. Anybody uh, care to stand up for the uh, Good evening. My name is Steve Bradstreet with Ransom Consulting. And uh, we had met with the uh, staff, Angela J. and Jamel, uh, two and a half weeks ago in regards to um, getting this uh, approved, uh, and that's why in front of you is only the, what we call the subdivision plans, the two sheets, sheet one of two and two of two. Um, and the changes that you may see or that are reflected on this um, are based on other comments from uh, Army Corps, et cetera, and what we did was, and I'll use the laser pointer on the screen behind you, um, Landlock Lane, which came up and dead ended about here, we cut all the way back um, to here. Lot three, uh, or one and two, are eliminated. Uh, what we did was we provided a right of way meeting the town's right of way standards for alignment, uh, which was a request by the town. This land over here, the land in here, this land in here above or to the north of the right of way will all be donated to the land trust. So all of this is donated to the land trust. The only place that is not is outside of lot three between preservation landlock and that right of way. There's some land in here that um, the land trust and, and uh, Army Corps did not feel valuable in case the town ever comes in and puts a road in here, it bisects that property. So this is going to be held in perpetuity for um, uh, conservation land. It's not land trust, but it is conservation land, and it will be deed restricted. So those are the changes. Um, there are other uh, miscellaneous things that Jamel did mention um, that are uh, graphical in nature, 
and will be revised on the on the plans and resubmitted for the uh, staff to review and approve. This um, this proposal is um, up for uh, a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who has would like to speak about it? Let me turn to the uh, planning board. Does anybody have any questions about the remaining issues left? Roger. Um, yes, uh, I, I guess I have to go through Jamal and ask him this. Um, in the staff report, you mentioned about the, um, the buffers and the drainage, landscaping and drainage within the buffer area. Has that been, has that been satisfied? Uh, we haven't seen any revised plans, um, but I, I assume it can be. That, um, that was one of the uh, original questions where the setback line was within the buffer or within the drainage easement. Those have been moved out, may not be totally reflected on that plan, on this plan, but let me show you where those are. Um, behind lot 13 to 17, there will be a 15 foot buffer and a 15 foot drainage uh, easement. Behind these lots here, 15 foot buffer, 15 foot drainage easement. And that's what's shown right now. Um, and then along here, 15 foot buffer and a 15 foot drainage easement. So those have been shown on this plan. I think there was one question that uh, was brought up in the interim from Jay indicating that he thought that this looked like it was 20 and 20 instead of 15 and 15. So we're revising that. So those are partially reflected on this plan. Okay. and. Um and the same, um, there was a mention about the transformers and the electrical conduits. Uh, yes. Uh, um, in our meeting uh, that I uh, mentioned, uh, Angela said that the, um, the comments that you see before you uh, were technical, <coughs> graphical in nature and could be, as long as we address them, revise the plans prior to the pre-construction meeting, she was acceptable to that, and so that's what we're doing. So all those different items that you see on there are being addressed and actually have probably 75% have already been addressed by CAD and, and uh, are in the works and will be res resubmitted as soon as we can. Other questions from the board? Are you all set? Yeah. Jen? Rick? Uh, the only thing I'd like to mention is when you spec out the street lights, can you make sure that they're dark sky certified? Uh, they are the town standard, which yeah, I yeah. would assume is dark sky. And we have a detail on the plans that was provided by the town, and it is in the plans. Okay, and so you're going to do exactly the specs exactly that the town has? Exactly what the town has, okay, yes. Okay, so that's got dark sky certification. Very good, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Robin? Yeah, what did you decide on to demarcate the residential properties from the open space? We have three different um, methods. It depends on uh, the area and how much passive uh, recreation is there. If it's a playground uh, area, we're probably uh, looking at a little bit um, uh, wider space or more space. So we probably look at something vertical like a fence. We have fence, we have boulders and we have landscaping. Places that would get uh, receive the boulders are like on the bat backs of lot five, six, seven, and 12, which backs up to the wetland. We figured that boulders are there. It's a, a, an adequate demarcation of the wetland. Uh, other places that are against abutting properties, homes, and things like that would probably be the uh, landscaping or split rail fence, something. Will the boulders be in place prior to construction? Construction of the homes? Of, yeah, of the homes. Yes, by phase, well, by by phase. phase correct, by phase. Okay, I think that's really important. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from the planning board? Anything from the applicant? Um, no. All right, we have a draft motion, which I'll read. <clears throat> 
I move to approve the project titled Cottages at Sawyer Road, at Sawyer, excuse me, proposed by Cottages at Sawyer LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Ransom Consulting, Inc., dated February 2020, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings, the applicant is proposing a 64-lot, 92-unit residential subdivision at 98 Sawyer Road. The subdivision is located within the Village Residential 4, VR4 zoning district, and is further identified on the Town of Scarborough tax match, maps as map R59 lot 8C. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the subdivision adequately addresses the requirements of the subdivision and zoning ordinances. Waivers. Number one, permit the requested road width of 22 feet instead of 24 feet. Two, permit the requested temporary left side hammerhead design along Preservation Way as part of phase one of the project. Three, permit the requested street intersection design of Cape Cod Lane between Bungalow Way and Preservation Way and Camry Lane between Bungalow Way and Preservation Way. Four, Permit a sidewalk along one side of all streets within the development with the requirement that the applicant designs and constructs a sidewalk from the development along Sawyer Street that connects to the existing sidewalk along Sawyer Street to the south of the proposed development, including an appropriate crossing at the site entrance. Conditions. Prior to the release of the signed final subdivision plan, the applicant shall a, execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater management ordinance. B, secure the required performance guarantee with the town engineer. C, make any necessary revisions to the subdivision sheets to be recorded, noted in the staff review comments in the memo dated 2-18-20. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two. Prior to the pre-construction meeting, the plan set shall be revised to address A, the remaining staff review comments in the memo dated 2-18-20, B, the review comments in Woodward and Curran's memo dated 1-23-20, C, the review comments in Goral Palmer's memo dated 1-21-20. D, provide an approval by the Army Corps of Engineers. This shall be reviewed and approved by the Planning Department. Three, site plan approval will be required for the proposed development within lots three and 35. Four, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, pay the traffic impact fees, B, pay the recreation contribution fees. Five, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Does the planning board have any further comments or questions? In that case, all in favor, raise your hands. Thank you. It's unanimous. And thank you very much, thank you very much sir. Thank you on behalf of myself and my family. Uh, and we appreciate what you what you're doing here in terms of providing some workforce housing for the for the folks in Scarborough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is RAM Management Company requested a site plan amendment for 200 U.S. Route 1 Assessor's Map U44, Lot 15. Jamel? Thank you. Uh, so this project's in the TBC Zoning District uh, at the existing Centerville Farm uh, development. So the applicant was actually on the board's uh, last agenda from January 27th, but it was tabled due to the late hour. And staff and did not receive any additional materials, so we're um, still looking at the same uh, submission. 
So the applicant's proposing a 12,000 square foot two-story office building within the, within the rear portion of their property. Staff has noted in the memo um, that the language within the TVC zoning district uh, requires a maximum front yard of 90 feet for a principal building abutting Route 1. Uh, but given that the TVC 2 and 3 zoning districts require only principal, the only require only the principal building closest to the abutting streets to meet the standard. Uh, staff is in the process of updating the TVC zoning ordinance to better align with these zoning districts. Uh, staff does anticipate this to be completed uh, during the spring of 2020, but the board will be unable to take final action on this project as proposed, and t as proposed until the zoning ordinance is amended. A few more comments. Uh, staff has noted the 25 foot side and rear setback uh, with buffering prov provisions is required, given that the parcel abuts a residential district. It does appear that the easterly parking area encroaches on the required setback, and there also appears to be an opportunity to provide additional uh, buffering provisions along the easterly and southerly property boundaries, boundaries in order to meet this zoning standard. The Towns Oak Hill pedestrian plan uh, recommends a sidewalk along the Route 1 frontage of the property. So staff has recommended the applicant construct the sidewalk here as to provide a connection to the existing pedestrian signal across Route 1 and into the Oak Hill Plaza area. And the town's traffic and civil peer reviewers uh, have provided comments related to this site, uh, re related to site access, stormwater management, and site grading. And staff is, um, the applicant may want to consider meeting with staff and the peer reviewers to dis discuss these specific comments uh, if desired. And finally, the applicant has requested several waivers, um, including building plans and a lighting plan. Uh, so the board should be sure to provide direction on these requests. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. And to the applicant. Thank you. My name is Howard Golden Farb. I'm president and owner of Ram Management Company and owner of Centervale Farm. Uh, thank you. At the last meeting, uh, we had a chance to talk very briefly, even though we the hour had passed, the 10 o'clock hour had passed, and there was mention that um, there would be something, maybe something between the last meeting and this meeting that would address the issue that was not mentioned at the last meeting, which I believe was the frontage issue. Um, am I to assume that the discussion that you had just a few moments ago regarding the 90-foot frontage and the different zones is what was being referred to? Jamel? Uh, I believe so. I actually yes. wasn't here at the last meeting. Um, the Jay had mentioned that, or, or the, uh, the chairman had mentioned that. Um, and what I hear you saying is that we can present, but you cannot give us final approval until sometime this spring. Do you have any sense of when in the spring that may take place, just for our own timing in terms of construction? If and, and, and Jamal, you're the one approval. who's the uh, planning board is, uh, the planning department is presenting. Do you have a sense of a schedule? Uh, yeah, so the planning department is planning on bringing the amendments uh, to the town council in early March uh, for their first reading, and then it would come back to planning board for public hearing, and then back to town council for a second reading and public hearing. And um, that, that's a process of a couple of months? Yeah, I would assume uh, April or May. Okay, be done. thank you very much. That would fit in with our timing, although yep. I understand our timing is secondary to how long it would take for the town. Well, thank you. As, as was mentioned, um, we... Uh, several years ago had approval to build a second building. This is a little bit different. It's a smaller building than we were asking for um, and received approval for, uh, I believe, in 2012. At the time, uh, construction costs and market rents were such that it was not um, an intelligent decision to go ahead and build at that time. Uh, construction costs have not come down, but rents have gone up. And we now, uh, coming back to the board with a request for 12,000 square foot uh, not addition, but second building. Um, the building, and one of the comments was, we sent a letter to Jay regarding materials. The building that we're proposing that you see in the rendering is very similar to the, the what we call the barn, uh, which was in fact the second building built on the site. The first building was where the cheese iron in, and our offices are, which is the building portion that looks like a home, and then what we call the barn, which is the building that looks like this, was built afterwards, both of them being built by Steve Center. I bought the property in uh, 2006, 14 years ago, when we moved our offices there. And again, now what we're requesting is uh, approval to build a second building of 12,000 square feet. Same material, same colors, in terms of the roof, the siding, and the overall design, with a, a slight few changes just to 
give it its own little appearance, but not to make it a different building. We want to create a campus effect. We're um, proposing 135 spaces. I think the requirements are 134 spaces. We do have an existing tenant that would like to expand and take one of the, f one of the two floors, which is why I was asking about a uh, possible time frame for um, the town to go through the changes that are necessary in order to get us final approval. Um, and the landscaping um, will be very similar to what is there now. Uh, we don't take any credit for the overall landscape design, which was done by Steve Center. We've only tried to keep it and improve it where, where we could. But um, as you know, that's one of the features of the property is the landscaping. We intend to continue that with the development of this building. Um, we will, I know the lighting plan hasn't yet been uh, uh, submitted, but we intend to improve the lighting within the standards of the town because there are areas even now that are dark um, around the existing building and the parking lot, so we want to improve that without changing the overall character of the, of the property. Um, we're again obviously prepared to answer any questions. Our architect and engineer, Tygen Bond, is here. Our architect, I'm sorry, is not here. Our engineer is here, Tygen Bond, um, to answer any questions, specific um, questions related to the engineering and, and specificity on the property. So I would like to answer any questions you might have of me and then turn it over to John Lorden um, to answer any more detailed questions. The, the, the procedure. Excuse me. The procedure that we follow um, is you make your presentation and then this is subject to a public hearing. Uh, and so we'll hold a public hearing. And then following that, the board asks questions and it may be that the board will be asking questions of your engineer. So I think if there's something important that you would like him to address right now, now would be the time. And that may okay. take Thank care you. of some of the questions that come Thank up. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, John Lord with Ty and Bond, uh, representing the applicant. Uh, I'd like to walk you through kind of the existing site, what's proposed, and then uh, since we weren't heard last time, we did receive review comments, so we've spent some time making changes. Uh, we didn't resubmit anything. We're still working through that, uh, but we just wanted to kind of touch on some of those and list the ones that we are addressing. Will this work if I walk over here? As long as you're Is holding it. Very good. Thank you. As you can see, this is the existing site, the existing what was called the barn. This is where we are proposing a, uh, a building. But in terms of abutters, we've got commercial all around us to the west and to the north. There is residential to the uh, east, and then some uh, additional residential uh, buildings down to the south. Uh, there are two wetlands that are on site. One was created as part of a stormwater detention um, during this parking lot expansion. And then this back here is also uh, additional wetlands that are on site. Uh, there are two e um, full access driveways onto Route 1. One is up here to the south, one's a little bit further to the north. And in addition, there is a, an interconnection uh, to this bank and Starbucks uh, that are located over here. So you can go back and forth here and get you to the uh, signalized traffic uh, signal. There are also some easements uh, on the site, uh, utility easements, and then there's a, uh, a drainage and a sewer easement that come through uh, as well. What's being proposed? Uh, it's an additional 12,000 square foot building. That's the total. It's a 6,000 square foot footprint. Uh, as Mr. Goldenfarb said, there are 135 parking spaces, uh, and the project itself is very similar to what was approved in uh, 2013. So this amendment is just using a little bit of a smaller building, and it's a, it's a, it's a little different layout. The building was rotated before, and there was parking uh, over here, but that has been uh, shifted around a little bit to keep things an improvement. Uh, wetlands have been confirmed. We are providing dumpsters. Uh, We've got this entrance in here, so this is going to be the majority of parking for the office building. If this is full, there is a one-way around for additional parking. Uh, and as you leave here, you would um, exit back around as it is one way. Uh, we are proposing a stockade fence on this side of the property uh, for some uh, additional buffer to the uh, 
the butters. Utilities, so we're bringing water in, the building will be sprinkler. Uh, there's a hydrant out in front of the building as well. Uh, we're doing a sewer connection, it'll be gravity sewer from this building that's gonna tie into uh, a manhole that's on the property within the easement. The electric is gonna come from Route 1, uh, and uh, it's still be determined whether or not we will need an additional propane tank to uh, service this building, but if so, we'll be ex expanding the pad out in this area uh, for that building. There are wetlands located where this building is, so we will be required to uh, filed with the state, which we already have. Uh, we limited that to the greatest extent possible. Uh, it's less disturbance than it was back in uh, 2013. In terms of um, drainage, this whole parking lot, which is a little darker gray, that all flows. The top half flows to a treatment swale, and this, this half over here flows into a sediment all that ends up into a bioretention cell that then um, overflows out into the wetlands. Uh, we did touch on, uh, Mr. Goldenbar did touch a little bit on landscaping. If you're familiar with the site, the landscaping is beautiful on this site. Um, we tried to maintain that by keeping some distance between the sidewalks and, uh, and putting a lot of plantings in. Uh, lighting. Um, if you've been to the site as well, it's got very interesting lighting. It's old antique poles that are only about six feet high. There's three um, five-watt uh, five LED bulbs in it. It's, it's got a nice glow to it. I think uh, the butters um, don't mind it because it's not bright. It's not some big lighting. So uh, I would be interested to hear the board's uh, take on that uh, waiver that we're requesting. We did touch on the architecture. Uh, and then we have had a lot of comments back that uh, have been addressed that I'd like to go through pretty quickly, which, uh, which ones that we think we can knock right out. Uh, on the site, the southern entrance drive, this is a full access right now. So that's left in, left out, right in, right out. Uh, it is, I believe, the last uh, time this was approved. In 2013, that was uh, narrowed down to a right-in, right-out. It has further been requested to make that a right-in only um, because of the proximity of the other um, access drive and as well as, well as this interconnection. So uh, that is a change that will be on the next plans. It will be a right-in only on that southern drive. Uh, we are also uh, in agreement uh, or willing to put in the uh, sidewalk along the frontage. Uh, we have spoken with the city engineer. Uh, the typical detail is a four foot wide, what they call an esplanade, that is, a, you know, like grass planted area and a five foot sidewalk. We only have seven feet in the right of way, and when we explained that, she said, just kind of do the best you can. So, what we were thinking is a three foot um, esplanade and then a four foot sidewalk. And I think that would tie in nicely with what uh, comes from the bank because I think they're about three and a half or four feet wide as well. Uh, there was a request to uh, provide in this, this one-way traffic circle over here. Their pedestrians were walking in a striped area. They were, that was requested to bring that up um, so that the pedestrians were uh, protected. And that will be shown on the next set of plans. Uh, another request came in for bike racks and benches by the front of the uh, buildings. That will also be added. The dumpster enclosure was chain link fence with uh, slats in it, and uh, that'll be changed to a uh, wood stockade fence per request. Uh, there's also a uh, small piece of curb. So we had the parking right on the 25 foot um, residential setback, but the curb extended beyond it. So we have now taken the curb and moved that outside of it. So that'll also be reflected. Uh, well, we were at the meeting last, uh, last month, three weeks ago. Uh, we did have a discussion with an abutter who was asking us to extend the fence uh, a little bit further. That will be shown on the plans. Uh, it, after a further discussion tonight, uh, we were proposing a five-foot high stockade fence. Uh, we'll be bumping that up to six feet high just so somebody can't look over it so easily. Uh, we will be submitting to the sanitary sewer connection. 
Uh, they said that that's just a, revi a revised approval from the previous approval. Um, we're working through stormwater comments from Underwood and we main traffic resources is currently uh, revising the traffic impact study. So that's everything I wanted to hi highlight. We'd be happy to take any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, is an opportunity for any members of the public uh, that have a comment uh, to come up. And uh, when you come up, please state your name and where you live. And I ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, when you have about 30 seconds left, I will give a gentle tap. I, and when you hit your limit, it will be a louder tap. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Drew. 15 down East Lane, um, and I am an abutter to the property. Uh, I do want to make this clear at the very beginning. I'm not up here to speak against anything. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be sitting next to Howard if that was the case. So uh, um, I just want to get a little bit of context out here for the board so some of the areas of concern that I might have could be addressed. When we originally purchased our property, uh, home in 1979, the space behind us was then commercial business, 100-foot buffer. We all know that's changed to the, with the village uh, set up the way that it is now. Uh, and then after that, Centerville was built. Um, when it was built, at, when it was initially built, um, and, and Steve did a fantastic job with it, uh, but we did have problems in our area and our neighborhood after that was built, uh, both with, with break-ins, with theft. There was actually two sexual assaults um, on the street. And a lot of people were using our, kind of cutting through our lots to get over to Foxcroft. So those are some of the concerns at the time. There was also then a proposal to build apartment buildings behind that, going down towards the Old Eastern. Um, and they get together with Steve and negotiated a deal where the abutters there could purchase the land behind that and eliminate that. Well, when that, when that happened, they purchased that land it eliminated people being able to go down back behind there and an awful lot of the problems uh, basically went away with the exception of people cutting through the property. Um, and Mother Nature took care of that uh, because so much of that area was cleared out. Black, uh, blackberry bushes grew up and filled the entire area and that took care of all the uh, students wanted to use that as, as a uh, shortcut. I guess what I'm speaking about is I want to make sure that we address any of these problems up front so they don't become problems in the future um, and so we can find solutions. I've already talked with uh, the folks here uh, in terms of one of them. Uh, with only a 25-foot buffer, uh, when that area is cleared out, there's going to be very, very few trees out, left out there. And you're going to be able to literally see all the way to Route 1 even in the summertime. Um, and the noise level is going to increase dramatically. So what I was looking for is to see if there was some way that behind um, where that fence is going, there could be some additional trees or something put in there. I'm not telling anyone what they have to be other than to get that area to fill back in some so that we can cut back on the noise and add a little privacy. We already talked about the fence. Uh, extending that and going from a five foot high to a six foot high to take care of the headlight problems and to make it enough so it's not private, you know, that there's some privacy into the backyards. Um, adequate lighting, I know that they have talked about it. Um, it is somewhat of a concern. Uh, there have been some <clears throat> less than desirable activities that have taken place uh, in some of that parking area back there. So I think it is important to get some good, adequate lighting back there, uh, but not enough, obviously, to, you know, to flood into the private zone. And the only other area I'm concerned at all would be snow storage. Um, wherever they're piling the snow up, I would just want to make sure, and I think you've addressed it, that that runoff is going away from down East Lane uh, and not going backwards, because that land, some of it sets down, and it can get very, very wet in the spring and summer as it is now. Uh, so we want to keep that from flowing back in. And that's the gist of all of mine. And hopefully I made it in your three minutes. Yeah, close. <laughs> 
And thank you very much. Um, now comments from the board or questions from the board. Can we start down at this end, Rick? Um, yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable in not being able to see a photometric plan on the lighting. Um, and you mentioned that the height of the lights were at six feet. Uh, Jamel, I think we have a, a requirement that the parking lot lights be, what is it, 16 feet minimum? I think maximum it's 20? 16 to 25. 16, oh, that's close. Yep. Still learning. Um, so I don't know, as this was approved prior, I don't know if that carries over or, or what. So can you kind of give us some clarity on that? Not to put you on the spot. May I address? I, I'm not sure of the procedure, but you were addressing the board uh, member. If you, could, if you could wait just a moment. Okay. Uh, the, the board member does have a question okay. for Jamel that might handle part of your re okay. request. Yeah, when you open up a site-to-site -site plan amendment, the, all standards do apply. So okay. if you prefer so, certain light fixtures um, to meet the standards, then that's, that's on the table. That's okay. So that helps. I'd, I'd like to see um, the height raised a little bit, and you might be able to get away from the number of lights you need. Uh, at the same time, I respect the abutters that are there, and they want uh, to have, you know, no spillover. So, of course, you can get the cutoffs right. So that's why I think having a photometric is critical for this uh, amendment. I, I think the, if I may, um, you know, I was going to respond to you that we're not anticipating that anything was approved seven years ago would be consistent with what would be approved. I, I wanted to clear that, okay. clarify that um, for my purposes. It was not our assumption either. The, um, the lighting that's there is lighting that we inherited. What I mean, as we made some changes to the use of the building, because Steve at one time had just his antique store there and different entrances, a, a lot of the six-foot lights are, they provide some light um, and they fit in well, I think, with the overall feel of the property. And I know the overall feel of the property is something that the town likes. Functionally, we have to make some changes within the guidelines, within the guidelines the, of the town's uh, regulations to make sure that there are areas that are safe um, for parking, especially those lots which are distant from where the six-foot lights are. So we probably will wind up, again, subject to approval with a combination of the style of light that we have now and some additional lighting to add um, safety and lighting for the uh, for the parking areas so I'm hearing when you come back you'll have a photometrics and some cut sheets for these yes. fixtures so Correct. okay Correct. thank you I appreciate that um, is there natural gas down route one there's got to be uh, Jamel would have the answer to that too Jamel you're the walking Na encyclopedia is there national, I'm is there sure, national I just natural gas down route one I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look I'll at our utilities. To, I would assume so, but I, I don't would know. think so. Uh, uh, the reason why I'm mentioning it is if you're able to provide a gas service in and get rid of the propane tank, you'll find A, you'll gain some efficiencies on your current equipment, and B, I might advise you to look at VRF systems. So maybe you don't even have to put propane in this new building. Uh, VRF systems are, are sophisticated heat pumps that can heat and cool, um, and the performance standards of these heat pumps have gotten so much better that they make a lot of sense in cold climate. I, I have familiarity with heat pumps. It goes back a number of years where they were not efficient in this climate because they worked best at 39 degrees and above. I'm sure there have been changes made to that. Um, I would encourage you to check those out. We'll They're working at minus 13 degrees, yeah. we're seeing. Working and efficient? And efficient, okay. better than a one, a COP of one. Yep. Um, and, and it could save you, uh, per BTU cost, it, it competes and quite well with a hydronic system. What, what is the supplemental source? Well, you're going to have an, uh, a dedicated in outside air Correct. Uh, system. So you can couple that with the VRF, or you can put a small propane boiler just to cover that dedicated air. Um, but... That's your system. Okay. 
So I would encourage you to Thank look you. at that, and maybe you can get away from propane equipment. Um, that's it for now. I look forward to uh, the continued discussion as we help him with this amendment on the, on the lot. Thank you. Um, Jen. Um, <clears throat> start by thanking you for working together with the town to install a sidewalk along the frontage of this property. I know that um, this area really needs that. Um, I'll, just, I'll just leave it at that. So that'll be a great addition for both your um, tenants and the town in general. Um, uh, also happy to hear that you um, are considering changing the access to the second, uh, the southerly driveway um, <coughs> to be a little bit more limited. When we, if I may, when we originally um, came in, in 2012, I'm, I'm sorry, 2012, 2013, the Dunkin' Donuts site had not yet been developed. And now, of course, we have access through the, um, through the uh, uh, lighting, lit access on. I go south. Most of the people who work with me go north. I know what it was like to go out and cross over certain times of the day to go south. Now it's much easier, of course, to go down through, uh, through that property and out, you know, Hannaford Drive. Yeah, um, so I think, um, you know, you're, you're in a, that's a distinct advantage to your, your property being um, that close to that fully activated signal. I think that, um, you know, closing that access, I, I, I would be curious if that was something that you had considered given that you have a full access just to the north and also access directly into the signal. If I may, if you look at the road patterns, the, the, the way the center section of Route 1 is, the access coming south, coming north to south is to go into that more southerly entrance of the property. If that's what you're referring to, if I, if I understood your, your question. You're talking about closing off um, that southerly? The, the southern, right there, yep. Um, Given its proximity to the signal and your other fully accessed driveway, I just think it has some distinct uh, safety advantages for your site. The, and it would also offer you the opportunity to expand parking in that area if you didn't the, have it as a driveway. The, um, the access to the... Um, Hannaford, the access to the, the uh, benefit savings, that's a one-way road mm -hmm. by design. So if you took a left at the light to come to onto our property, you couldn't come up that because it's dedicated as one way. Is it permitted that way? Or it's is there the opportunity way. to widen It's permitted that. that I can't say that it's always only used that way. I've seen people come up that if they're at Dunkin' sure. Donuts. But what that would mean is that the only entrance would be up by Dunkin' Donuts, which is often mistaken for Dunkin' Donuts. Sure. Um, and the way that the center section... It, it allows you to uh, stay in that and turn left off of Route 1 to come into the property only at the southernmost entrance, the one that they want to, I think by design they were talking about making only right out, right, right in and right out. Yeah. That, that, was, left a, in and out, that right. was a comment brought by staff and um, the traffic peer review, no? In that area? Because of uh, the, correct. Dro the drop of the center turn lane? Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, you... If someone's taking a left into your site, they really should be doing it at the northerly entrance, not that southerly entrance, because that's where the roadway transitions into the left turn lane at the signal. Um, and so generally having access like that, that close to um, a signal is, you know, not great. Um, you are at an advantage that you do have access in into the signal. I guess I would encourage your... Um, design team and staff to continue conversations about how else to make that possible. I don't, I don't know if, um, I don't know if there is the opportunity to widen that access into the Hannaford, the other, the opposite of Hannaford Drive, um, to be two way, but certainly that would be preferable from a, from an access yeah, that's not our standpoint. That's not our property. That is, uh, okay. that's a neighboring property. But again, we have a traffic engineer who's looking at this and they'll okay. present a plan. Great. Um, yes, and an updated traffic plan, uh, more recent than 2012. I'll look Correct. forward to reading through that. Um, looking at your site plans, I noticed that you're proposing to use some wooden curb, and I suspect that's because you may have some wooden curb elsewhere on the that's, site. That's that right? was what we when we acquired the property. 
um, that's the cribbing that was in there, and we've continued to use it and, ex and change it because it does deteriorate through the snow plows in just time. Right. Okay. So my my that just struck me. I was like, what does WC stand for? Um, anyway, so yeah, certainly unique um, can be good and bad. <laughs> But obviously, if you're familiar with replacing it due to quicker deterioration Very familiar. on the other parts of your site. Um, I guess, uh, oh, the uh, gentleman who spoke earlier referred to snow storage areas. I was not quite clear based on your plans about where you were intending to do that. John? Snow storage locations are shown on sheet C105. Uh, there's a little, uh, they're scattered throughout the site. It's on the landscape plan. Usually that's the best place to show it where you don't have trees. Um, but it's kind of tucked in in all kinds of different areas. Okay. Yep, it's that hatching right there. Okay. Great. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, Uh, I guess I would echo Rick's comments about the lighting plan. I do think there's some merit, especially given the clearing proximity to some of the res residential areas, that it would be interesting to see um, how the photometrics play out for this site. Um, and, you know, I hats off to your design team. This is definitely a challenging shape to work with and um, you know to try and it's clear that you've tried to accommodate some of the existing features on the site that you hope to retain and sort of squeeze in your you know whatever works for your development plan uh, outside of that um, I, I guess just sort of in general I I wish that there was a bit stronger of a pedestrian connection back out to route one especially given that you will be adding that um, sidewalk along the frontage there is we don't have a whole lot of bus stops in town but one of um, the existing stops that we do have is very close to the frontage of your property and so um, you know I don't know if in meetings with staff if the topic of uh, bus stop bus shelter or somehow providing um, space for that in the future came up but um, you know that's could certainly also be an amenity to your um, staff, patrons, customers that are coming to this site. Um, again, given the shape, I know that that's that's challenging. You, you know, you're not you're not squaring up to Route One like a lot of other properties where it would there's there's sort of a blatant straight line shot. Um, but I guess I would just encourage you to look at look at that as you refine your plans, you know, is, is there a way to kind of tie in that second building um, from someone on foot to, to either Route 1 or even if they've parked, you know, further up closer to Route 1 and want to the parking um, closer access to, the lower The parking building. closer to Route 1, um, all of the parking is available to all of the tenants. We don't have, we do have some um, Ameriprise requested, some visitor parking. We try to make it all available. So the parking that is closer to Route 1 now is generally taken by people who work at or, and go to the Cheese Iron or go work at RIM or work at Ameriprise or the tenants in that building. It's more likely that the people who work in, and go to the new building, if it's so approved, would be parking in that other space. I'm not sure how you would see a connection to Route 1 when you say a connection. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, by a connection to Route 1. A, a more direct pedestrian route for someone to get, so say you had, if there was a staff person working at any of those businesses that was taking the bus to work on this property, um, you know, if you were to sort of put yourself in their shoes, they would be, right now, they would be getting, there is no sidewalk that continues. Um, well, your, we, your project will be adding that, but, but then after that, it's sort of a discontinuous um, route to get back down to that lower building, that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, oh, also, the, my last comment just has to do with um, grading detail as you continue to refine plans. Um, further information on the plans to be able to ensure ADA compliance would be great. Sure, of course. Sir. That's all. Thank you, Jen. Roger? <clears throat> um, I just have a couple of things I'd like to have clarified. Regarding the lighting, uh, are you basically 
satisfied with the lighting you have now? No. You just want to complement it? Um, no, I want to add to it. Um, and I understand it's, it's, a, it's a balance between adding to the lighting and not disturbing anybody who's not benefiting from the lighting, like Tom, who lives adjacent to the property. Um, you know, it's very pretty lights, and it looks very nice with the style of the building. And again, that, that was something that, that Steve designed, chose when he first did it, and we wanted to just continue it. Uh, we haven't actually added many lights to the property, the existing buildings. Um, but there are areas um, in today's world where it might be considered dark, or when it gets dark at 4.30 in the afternoon, might, somebody might feel unsafe. And certainly when you go out to the new parking, um, most of that parking that's there now was put in by Steve many years ago. Nobody really uses it unless they're using it for reasons that we don't want it used for. We need to improve lighting there. We need to improve lighting around some of the back of the building and whatever, and do it in a way that um, doesn't offend. The back of the building is wetlands behind there. Nobody's going to be back there. Nobody lives back there. Um, but I think the greatest concern would be along the um, the area where Steve and his, neighbor, and his neighbors live. And that's probably the darkest area. And we need to create lighting in there that will make it safe for people to park there in the evenings. People walk to their cars and do that without offending the, the neighbors. So, so is, it, is it your uh, intention to replace the existing lighting? No, I'd like to add to, to what we have. Okay. Either, okay. either with um, lighting on the buildings in some areas, in other words, Splot of flood lighting, you know, directly aimed at certain areas that are dark. For instance, in the back of the barn building now, in the back of the cheese iron, in the back of the main building, it, it, it's dark back there. Yeah. And the lights that are there that are onion bulbs that look very nice don't adequately light that area. So we want to improve that as part of this plan and then come up with adequate lighting for the new building, but carry the same design plus whatever else we have to add into it. And I'm, I'm fumbling here a little bit because we don't have a plan yet, but the plan would have to address the areas that are dark without offending the neighbors and still continue with the overall design. I don't want to put in 20-foot LED lights uh, unless there's something that fit in well with the building and, again, don't offend the, neighbor, you know, don't offend the neighbors. We've done enough lighting in a lot of our projects that are not residential projects where we still have to be concerned with spill over to other properties, that there are a lot of different types of lights you can put in that are pr protective of surrounding properties and still provide the ambient light that you need. But we need a professional. Right. We need a um, plan to submit to you. And, and the reason I asked the question is because yep. I wanted to make sure, because uh, you had mentioned, Jamal, that once they go in to amend something, they have to bring everything up to standards. Now, the, the, would, would that mean the existing lights have to be replaced? and brought up to the 16 to 25 foot heights? I didn't say it had to be brought up to standards. Okay. Um, but I did say that That's it was, you were able question. to review it and request <laughs> okay. it's become oh, Okay, so then if he wanted to keep the existing lights, it, it, that would be a waiver? That would be a discussion with the planning board. Some of those lights might be considered landscape lighting as well. Yeah. And I'm well, not sure how that it relates to the overall lighting requirement. Okay, all right. I, I think from this discussion, um, what's quite clear from the board, you've got a requested waiver in here, uh, waiving the um, required lighting plans, and I get the sense from the board that that would not be a waiver that is granted. Uh, so we look forward to seeing the full lighting plan at the next time you come before us, and a lot of the questions that the board members have asked can be taken care of in that plan, and you have the time now with your architect and who's ever doing the lighting for you, uh, you have the time, given that we cannot do an approval tonight, you do have the time to really sit down and be very thoughtful, responding to all of these issues that you've raised uh, and that the board has raised. John can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the re original request for the waiver was not complete waiver, but was in the presentation of the, of the initial plans that were submitted. Knows we had not yet done a photometric plan. But we certainly intend to submit that. It was never an idea to just simply go through without it. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, just a couple of other points. Um, I actually, 
uh, about a week ago, I decided to drive down to go into the property, and I actually went the wrong way on the one-way street. <laughs> Because I, you know, by the bank. Oh, you mean from? I came in from, from, right, from, right from the other section yeah. and just went into the property. I don't recall seeing a sign that's. No, there's that, an arrow. Oh, there's just an, an arrow. Yeah, there's an arrow. That's that's what they requested. And and do you have um, any signage on the existing property to indicate to people if they want to head south to go out that way instead of trying to cross over Route 1? No, uh, no. Um, we're just, assume, we're just assuming people would, would see that. Okay. Um, I mean, the signage would say what? Because right now well, just, they're not... Just a directional sign. Yeah, right now they're not prevented from going out... Right, um, on that, that entrance and taking a southern turn. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who's tried it once would never do it again. Yeah. Um, but that was the only way to go south until the property next door was developed, and that was required that um, the developers of the property next door connect with that property yeah. and put that in. Maybe, maybe uh, if uh, the southern access point becomes right in, right out, there might be, you know, you might want to consider putting yeah. a sign there to indicate don't we're go one, out here. We're one south, just, just continue an hour left. One south, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the other thing um, I wanted to ask, on, on the, um, the, the, the abutter right there, um, talking about uh, additional um, buffering trees, it, I want to make sure I know where where he lives. Is whereabouts is, does he live on that map? You have, <laughs> you have a pointer. I down a little bit further. I'm right on that right. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay, so you're way down. You're I'm almost right on there, the yeah. on the eastern side of the property. That's correct. If you know where, where the clean where the dry cleaners is, if you take a right. Yeah. That's the street that abuts us on that side. That's, that's down East Lane. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, any thoughts about additional buffering? Oh, y yes. I mean, of course, we've been okay. asked and, and would. Okay. Do that. Okay. Good. Um, I, I think the I think the property looks great. Thank I you. agree with you on that. And I, and uh, driving down the back, it kind of reminded me a little bit of um, the Harris Secret Inn up in Freeport when you drive down on the back there. Um, I'm not sure I've ever been back at the Harris Secret Inn. <laughs> In what respect? Just the well, grade? It's just or? nice. It's nicely oh. landscaped and everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, with the, you know, when you have it all set up with the, um, the landscaping and everything, and I think it's going to look re really nice. Thank you. Nice, uh, nice development. Robin. Yeah, I apologize. I wasn't at the last meeting um, to to see your sort of um, preliminary presentation. But I can attest, I was at um, a long-range planning committee meeting on last week, and the zoning amendment was introduced for the to the long-range planning committee, and it was discussed that it will likely be um, a go-ahead from the long-range planning committee to the, the town council. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> but um, it was a public meeting, so yes, I think you are on track for your zoning amendment. Um, uh, relative to the to the frontage and uh, property boundaries and things like that, um, I, I'd like I guess I'd like to first start by um, reiterating and emphasizing what some of my colleagues have already said, which is um, thank you for the sidewalk. That's very much appreciated. Um, but again, um, the need for a crosswalk from the from the sidewalk down to provide safe harbor for pedestrians would be important. And what, what you mean by a crosswalk? Where? Um, just a, I don't know, like a, a painted but, sign. But where? Kind of thing. You're not a, not across Route One. No. Oh, you're talking it's about across your property, our dr entrance. Okay. Through your property yeah. to pri provide safe you're harbor. You're just talking about from one side to the other. Yep. Just a how a continuation the pedestrian of the sidewalk with a cross hatch. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I think also the traffic plan. Um, it will, in addition to the lighting plan to come, will provide some really good information. And thank you, Madam Chair, for um, talking about that the lighting waiver is really off the table at this point. And I think we're talking apples and oranges from what was requested here. I'd like to just talk to you about the other two waivers. 
Um, have you rethought the other two waiver requests? One was for building plans and the other one is for signage. I think it was just that you didn't have those. Well, they weren't ready. Those will weren't be ready submitted. yet. Absolutely. Okay, so you aren't requesting a waiver. Yeah. It's just, hey, we know these aren't here yet. It's a placeholder. Perfect. Um, that's great news. Um, but I think with respect to the traffic plan and the fact that we do have to revisit all the elements, I think, on the site. We do need to think about why are there two driveways there or two curb cuts, and that is a safety concern, especially on Route 1 in this very busy portion of, the, of uh, this road and knowing that you're going to have um, a very successful, um, um, I think, uh, endeavor here. I think we need to sort of bring that up that all things are on the table and because at this point um in general the planning board has been really holding applicants feet to the fire as far as how many driveways you have so i'm i don't want to necessarily at this point um debate the merits of having one versus two but just bring it up that this is something that needs to be i think looked at with staff and talked about in depth with you all and your traffic engineers and speaking of which, I would, I'm just curious, how many times have you all met with staff to date yet on this project? I've met with Jay um, once, John. You met with Brad as well, and I met with yeah. him yeah. several times. Um, and have you had your DEP pre-application meeting yet? Okay. It's, it's really important, too, that you do incorporate the town engineer when it comes to this pre-application meeting for a number of reasons. And which gets me to the next, um, I think, group of questions that I want to ask, which is a, a gr around landscape impacts and how you're minimizing those. Um, I think, you know, what we've heard from Mr. Drew and, you know, just in looking in that area too, how beautiful it is right now with the lush forested um, buffer. And it's uh, actually probably a forested wetland, um, seeing where you have your building footprint going. So I, I guess my question to you all is, how do you plan to minimize the landscape impacts there? Or what do you plan to, to remain on site from what is there in the existing landscape? I can't answer that at the moment. Okay. In other words, as you can see from the site, and. Um, other, I don't know if you know other developments we've done. I built the Atlantic House and a lot of properties in the Greater Portland area. I've been accused of being a landscaper versus a developer um, because I really like the trees, I like grass, I like that. Um, that doesn't answer your question, but there are some things that will have to go simply because the zoning ordinance requires that we don't build in wetland or we don't make so much of an impact. But um, we we want to keep as much as we can for two reasons. One is it's expensive to replace. So if you have what's good and functional, leave it. Mm -hmm. right. And if there's something that is, um, I've moved hundreds and hundreds of trees or giant tree spades um, in properties to save trees um, or to bring in large species um, where it becomes appropriate to do something like that. Um, some things would have to go, yep. and unfortunately, simply because of the nature of development that's, but we try to save as much as we can yeah that, that's, that's fabulous that's, and um and and just for the purpose of you know maintaining the natural landscape but i think what you also have here is an ecosystem providing some really important services here for example the forested wetland mm -hmm. where your where your building is going to go i have some questions i think about the footing and your geotechnical analysis have you begun that because it looks like the the majority of your building footprint is going to go right over that, um, the, the thickest of your wetland area. Like, for example, on C106. Yeah, Joe was just saying the footings haven't yet been designed. Okay. We're trying to build on the upland as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. So, again, I, this is just reiterating the need to, to bring the town engineer yeah. to your pre-application meeting with DEP um, in that... Um, these wetlands in there are very challenging, and, and, and it was also brought up in this area of Oak Hill, too. We don't want any adverse impacts, for example. What was being stored there like a sponge, that wetland where your building is going to go is actually acting like a sponge mm -hmm. right now. And so there may, you know, we want to protect against some adverse impacts to Down East Lane and other downstream 
uh, a butters type of thing. So the other question I have, I guess, is on your um, stormwater or your drainage report. You present your pre-development and post-development numbers. Are those pre-development meaning with the barn sitting there? As it is today. As it is today. Okay, so we're not really even going back to pre-development. This is, so it's a little bit of a misnomer. Okay, so that's even more important of a reason, I guess I'm, I'm saying to make sure the town engineer gets there with you to talk to DEP. Um, I like you talking about that you're, you're open then to the town's, the town staff's request to get some more trees in there for the buffering to not only protect the neighbor's privacy and things like that, but also the town standards. Um, take, take advantage of all those opportunities. I'm not seeing that though that would, um, that is falling on deaf ears. Okay, let me see if there's anything else. I think that's it, Madam Chair. That's all I have. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I would like to reiterate um, Jen's comment about the internal, uh, the internal circulation of pedestrians and cars. Uh, I'm a frequent uh, visitor to the Cheese Iron, so I. I, I'm on that property uh, frequently, and as I look at that, I've met cars coming through from uh, the bank or Scarborough, uh, the, uh, the uh, Starbucks, uh, as I'm heading out. And you can put signs, you can put signs on the road, you can put cross hatches, you can put red blinking lights, and people are still going to go in the wrong direction uh, because they missed the entrance and they said, oops, so I can get there this way. Um, I think it's going to be very important, your signage, your internal signage, directing people. For instance, you've indicated that it's a one way around what's a sort of a, a circle, a parking circle. Um, that needs to be very clear to people that it is a one way. I can visualize people when they're coming in, let's say they take the right turn in the southern entrance and they go to the, past the cheese iron and start around the back, I can see them coming to a screeching halt, not realizing that you actually can't circle the building and turning around. So you're going to need some very clear directional signs for the drivers and a very clear way, method of passage for the pedestrians. I think building the building that you're proposing and the first building really aren't connected in the front by anything resembling a sidewalk. So people coming from uh, this new building and going to the cheese iron are going to find themselves walking through the parking lot and they're going to be walking past the entrance where cars are coming in. I, I think the more you can do in terms of internal sidewalks and internal uh, directional signs, the, the better off that you are. Uh, I appreciate that we're going to see a design, a lighting design. Uh, I would also like to see more of the building plans. Uh, and I understand that you're looking, at, you're looking for tenants now, but in the past we've been able to see some conceptual ideas of how they might be laid out and it simply gives us a good visual uh, about the usage and the people who are going to be coming and going from those buildings. So that would be very helpful. Uh, and I understand you've requested a waiver, but I'm assuming that we will see that at the next time. It was, over, it was again a request for the initial presentation. Correct, that, that uh, we will see that the next time you come before us. I would appreciate if you can take a look at those designs. And I note that the staff made a comment about perhaps putting more of a, uh, a gathering space um, whether it's an additional porch or it is a patio with some benches in front of that building, the new building, I would, I would think that would be a very good thing to design. We have requested a lot of commercial buildings to do likewise uh, in the winter. It's not going to get a lot of use, but certainly in the summer it's a place for people to gather, it's a place for people to sit uh, and rest, and they've gotten their uh, sandwich at the cheese iron and they're coming back uh, and they're going to sit down before they go back to work. Um, your landscaping, 
uh, is, I would call it magnificent. It really, it really is lush. It is very well done. I look forward to seeing in more detail how that's going to continue in that space, um, in that new area. And I also have a concern about the two access roads, the, the, uh, the two access areas. If it's possible to eliminate the southernmost, that might be very good. And I understand it might not be possible, but I think as you do your own traffic study, uh, you might want to take a look at that. So I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. May I ask a question? Sure. And again, we're going to have a traffic study, and, and they will come up with their own recommendations as to what they think. But what I'm referring to on the center lane of Route 1, if you were to take a left to go into the northerly entrance, which people do, um, and just make that the only entrance. I used to use that. Um, the problem is if you stop your car to take a left because of traffic going north in Route 1, you're now blocking that center lane. Whereas the southern entrance the, has a cutoff, so you can get out of that center lane, which is made for cars going north and south that are going to turn. So I'm not sure why, and again, we'll present it to the traffic engineer, why having a left from Route 1 going south, a left onto the property, represents a problem. Just curious as to your, your thinking on that. I think it's the opposite. This, the, the center turn lane that's on Route 1 adjacent to your northerly driveway is designed to do just that. It's a queuing space for vehicles to sit and get out of the flow of traffic to wait to take a left turn. Um, it'll, it, and it prevents cars from doing that in a travel lane, so it allows southbound traffic on Route 1 to continue. The problem with the, the way that that's, you know, the existing setup in front of your southerly driveway is that that center turn lane has now transitioned. Um, it's actually striped, it's a, it's a double, like a wide double yellow stripe that transitions out to accommodate a dedicated left turn lane for the signal. And so what you would not want to do is to rely on that southerly driveway for left turns into your site in the event that that left turn lane backed up from the signal. Uh, it's far less likely that it's going to back up all the way to your northerly driveway, but more so, um, you know, just a, a, higher, a higher likelihood of conflicts um, with, with the southerly driveway. And it's also generally good practice to have your driveways as far from a signal um, I, I would as admit to a shorter memory than I had even seven years ago when I first presented this. But I take coming from Portland a lot, because I go into the city and back a lot, I've started using this because it does widen out there. So I'm gonna, I, I just remembered a different way, but I'm gonna go take a look. Yeah. But again, um, the tra I'll have the traffic engineer when we talk to them look at that, and I'm sure that'll be one of their, one of their considerations. I just remember it differently that using the southern, it widens out and lets you get out of the center lane while you take a turn, either here or take a turn at the traffic well, center. And I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, lane assignments have been modified at that signal recently with the addition of the bank and yeah. the coffee shop there. So it's, it's probably not, in the grand scheme of things, it's not all that old. Take a look. Thank you. Roger. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, you might have touched on this, Rachel, when you're talking about the internal pedestrian walkways. Um, the, uh, the new building, I was wondering, are you thinking about doing any kind of a, a sidewalk or a connection right behind the existing barn so that people who are working in a new building would have easy, easier access to get over, say, to the cheese iron? There's a very bad grade there. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's grass back there, but it drops down quickly. There's a little stream that runs through there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not... Um, I mean, to go the back way to the cheese iron? Yeah. Instead of walking, I mean, basically, they have to walk all the way around. I don't it. think people use it because it's a bad grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've done it because I'm looking. We had painting, painters in the building. I've gone back up there, but, mm. you know, the grass is slippery. I suppose something could be done. It's not, I think it would be safer to do it the other way, to do something in the front. All right. And I have uh, one picky question left. Uh, and that is, I noticed on the plan set that um, you reference on there that there is a negative easement. 
uh, on the adjoining property, and I've never heard of a negative easement. Could somebody tell me what a negative easement is? No. no. On which property? When you say on the adjacent property, on the Dunkin' Donuts side? Yeah, it, look, it looks like uh, where the sign is. Uh, and it's a note on your plan set. All right, thank you. So you couldn't add parking or have to All right, I appreciate it. It was, it was confusing. Thank you very much, and we look forward to the completed uh, application coming to us um, in a month, month and a half. I think March 3rd. We were planning to be back before the board for about March 28th, so submitting by the 14th. Okay, then we might not have the the uh, we still might not be able to approve, right. but it will go a long way to getting a lot of right. these questions cleared up. You've cleared up a lot of them by talking to us. We really need to see them on the plans. Is there such a thing as conditional approval? Yeah, just gives let's, us a let's, better sense of let's let's see <laughs> let's see how far you get to answering our okay. questions the next time. <laughs> Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is the Scarborough Fish and Game Association requests an advisory opinion for a miscellaneous appeal for an expansion of a legal non-conforming use, 79 Holmes Road, Assessor's Map R33, lot number one. Jamel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is located in the RF uh, zoning district, and as you said, along Holmes Road at 79. So the applicants applied for a miscellaneous appeal uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals for an expansion of a legal grandfathered non-conforming use. So in accordance with the zoning standards, uh, before making a decision on any miscellaneous appeal, uh, the ZBA shall refer the appeal to the Planning Board for an advisory opinion. So the advisory opinion should be based on the non-conformance standards uh, set forth in the zoning ordinance. So the applicants proposing to construct a 2,400 square foot addition to their existing clubhouse and a 720 square foot addition to their indoor shooting range. So staff did provide the board with uh, several comments for your consideration related to building design, stormwater controls, and grading. Uh, and the applicant should be sure to discuss these with the board this evening. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. And let us hear from the applicant. Thank you. Uh, Michael Kane. I am the president of Scarborough Fish and Game, and with me I have uh, Bob Chandler sitting in the audience. Bob is our chief range safety officer, and between the two of us, we hope we can answer all your questions. When I looked at the plan set, I thought I would make this quick copy for you, and I apologize. I tried to get it on 11 by 17. So you'd get an idea of, of where that building is located, and also to give you an idea of where we've come from. Now, I was before this planning board, oh, I recognize Roger, I think, five years ago, I think it has been now, four and a half, five years ago, when we brought forward the master plan for Scarborough Fish and Game. That was in conjunction with the Maine Department of Environmental and Pet Protection because we were over three acres on the amount of impermeable structures and surfaces we had at the range, we could not do anything at the range until we did that DEP permit. So we brought that permit forward, and that permit started us on a five-year project uh, schedule. And I'd like to, if you go down to the bottom of, of the page, you'll see a green square, which is a proposed 20 by 30 storage shed. That was actually the first building I believe we built as we started the master plan. If you go just a little ways further, that's the access road that comes down into the property. We're approximately 180 acres. 
that road is gated. It is electronically gated now, so you need a fob in order to get onto our property. The only times that that's not required is when we are hosting a public shoot or competition. As you go down further, the next one that you will come to is our sporting clays area. And in that area, we needed a kitchen addition, which we completed a couple of years ago. And we also had to add a second storage garage in that area. If you proceed further down, you'll see the red square. That's the clubhouse that you're seeing in the plans. If you go towards your left and go up in, you'll see a yellow square. That is the trap house. And that is a joint project that we're working with uh, Maine State Inland Fisheries and Game to bring back skeet onto the property. It's, it's a program that we had to do away with because the skeet fields that were originally built in the 50s or 60s, those shot onto wetlands. And so obviously we can't shoot and drop lead on wetlands. So we did away with skeet. Uh, we've been asked if we would bring it back because there's nobody in the area that has it. Uh, we received a very good starter grant from Inland Fisheries to make that happen. The circle that you see where the cutoff word is, that's a sediment area. That's where shortfall falls from the new skeet. In other words, we have to do diagrams and drawings so that the uh, DEP knows exactly where our shortfalls are falling. Uh, the major design of our property, with the exception of the 600-yard rifle course, everybody shoots in towards the property, so we're not shooting away from our property at all. You'll see a blue square up in the, up in the upper left corner. That also was one of the things we brought forward DP, and that is a proposed shoot house. That's for the law enforcement agencies and military people. As a practice property, we, we have not started in any way, shape, or manner looking at that. Uh, that'll be the last piece of our puzzle. Uh, probably it will need grants from law enforcement agencies to make that happen. Um, by the way, we have 47, Bob, 40, 47 law enforcement militaries uh, agencies that train and certify on our property. So we have quite a few that are there just about every day. Um, so that's the big picture of the property. The property does not allow hunting. I love to say that because everybody thinks that'd be the first thing we'd allow. There is no hunting allowed on our property, obviously, because we're controlling where people can shoot. Uh, we are posted as a, as a live range around the entire property, so we've got signs up. Those signs in the last two years have been, been converted from old wooden ones to plastic ones. And uh, that's kind of a general overview of the property. Now, what we're looking to do with our clubhouse, the reason we kind of saved it to last, it's the most expensive thing for us to do, uh, what we're trying to do is to get enough room so that we can do more than one thing at once. Right now, our clubhouse meeting room is uh, fire department certified for 40. And it, it's just not enough. We, we, we can't hold classes. Uh, you know, we, we really need to expand it. Uh, we can't bring guest speakers in because how do you pick 50 people or 40 people? out of our population. We have 1,100 uh, members in the club now. We pride ourselves in being a nonprofit. Uh, we pride ourselves in the fact that we keep our costs down for membership to one of the lowest in the state, if not the lowest. And uh, that's why we have so many members. A lot of those members, I don't dare give you an exact figure, but a lot of those members obviously are Scar Scarborough citizens like Bob and myself. So that's the general overview of it. 
So we have two things we're trying to do. One is, is to get a room large enough so we can do a little more with education, do a little more with guest speakers and things along that line. The other piece of the puzzle we're trying to do is we've had an indoor pistol range for quite a few years. I'm going to say it goes back into the 60s or 70s. And at that time, nobody thought we'd need anything any bigger than that. Well, what's happened to us is we have a very active youth organization now, and those youth uh, shoot in competition. Uh, we have them starting at a junior high school age all the way up through to college age. Uh, we have some of them that have received scholarships to go to college on how accurate they shoot. Uh, I would say this is the first year also we have more young ladies shooting than we do young men, which is which shows you what's changed in, in the years as we're there. We don't have enough lanes in our range for us to be able to hold competition, certified competitions. So our youths end up going, the closest one is up to Augusta. So we're transporting up to Augusta. We would like to add to that range, and it's, it's not doesn't take a lot, it's only 12 feet wide. It's a 50 foot range and so we're, you, we're actually in the drawing, you'll see it says 60 feet and that's because we gotta have a shooting line in front, of the, in front of the 50. So those are the two major items. Uh, the building itself, the first piece on the building was built in 1948. Uh, during 1950 and in the middle, I'm going to say 1960, middle 1960s, they added two more pieces to the building. And all of that was done with volunteer labor. And in those days, it wasn't done with plans. It was done with people coming up and doing a barn erection, as they would say. We've now reached the stage where that's not really serviceable anymore. We've got some timber rot in there. Our roofs are ready to get redone. And so we decided it's time to pull it all together. We understand that, that we're a non-conforming use, but we hope you understand we've been there since 1948. Uh, this piece right here won't have any effect surrounding area as far as noise goes or anything like that. The range is an indoor range. Uh, so we have none of those issues that, that would come out of this. And the best thing I can say now is I'd like to answer questions. Okay, so there's my overview. Thank you. Um, yeah. It actually sounds like a great place. My father taught me to shoot in a gravel pit uh, out in the country, so yeah. this sounds yeah. just wonderful. And more and more that's an art that's no longer there because of liability insurance for the contractors in their gravel pit. And so that's how our numbers grow is because they got to come to us to shoot. All right, I'm going to ask uh, if there are public com uh, any member of the public would like to comment. This is time for a public hearing on this. Any comments? Hearing none, thank you. Uh, let me just remind the board that our job here is to take a look at, and I'm going to quote from the zoning ordinance, the impact and effects of the enlargement, expansion, resumption, or conversion to another non-conforming use on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects on the non-conforming use before the proposed enlargement, extension, expansion, resumption, or conversion to another non-conforming use and be the enlarged, extended, expanded, resumed, or conversion to another non-conforming use will comply with, it, with the standards for special exceptions contained in section 4.1 uh, in the zoning ordinance. Uh, so we are to issue an advisory opinion on this and let me throw this open to the board if you have any comments that you think should go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I, I think Absolutely. I just, I just have a couple questions, sure. I guess. Um, 
Um, yeah, better place than a gravel pit to, to, to learn how to shoot. Um, how are you, um, do you, do you feel that the number of competitions that you'll have will increase? No. And is it just, uh, you know, you, you walked us through the green mm -hmm. and the yellow. That's mm -hmm. a proposed future expansion. That, that is correct. If you We're look, just talking about the clubhouse today. No, the, uh, the trap house yep. is done. The yellow is okay. done. The green is done. Okay. The only thing that will be left after the clubhouse is the proposed shoot house for the law enforcement. Okay. Okay. The rest of it has been done under the plans. Okay. Yep. So what we have in front of us here is not going to be adding any additional spent munitions outside. Nope. Everything nope. is inside. Inside. And how do you manage your spent mu munitions from outside, the shots and things like that? Or is there a way that you collect those heavy metals? Absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm meeting with people for Augusta because they, uh, they want to come down and see how we do, do it. Okay, so what we have is if you look at, at, at the little plan that I gave you there, you see these things that look like hush shoes. Well, the hush shoes are actually the shooting ranges that are on the property. The shaded area there is just like you would find on any of your civil drawings, which is showing that, it, that the slope tapers off really quick. Those are the safety berms. They're approximately 24 feet high. Uh, in areas where we need to go higher than 24 feet, we then put up a wall that's about 12 feet, and that wall is with uh, two by 10 uh, lumber to catch any bullet that might ricochet out of the, of the property. Now, with 1,000 people shooting, they come in, they shoot into those berms. There's, there's a, what we call a hot area, which is about three feet off the ground up till about seven or eight feet off the ground. That's where the bullets are going into ballistic sand, okay? Now, what we found out was that to hire somebody to take the lead out of the berms is something that, that a not-for-profit public club can do. You, you'd have to have membership that could put a lot of money out on the table, as they say. So what we did was we got together and we went to Thompson Engineering, which is up the other side of Augusta, because they're builders of trommels. And trommels, to, to, to people who don't know, are just a circular drum that spins with a screen. And what they use for mainly is, we're back to the gravel pits, take the rocks out of the gravel, mm -hmm. uh, take the sticks out of the loam. Mm -hmm. So we asked Thompson if they could take and manufacture one to take the bullets out of the sand. So we take our own bullets out of our safety berms. And, and with the population that we have, we're bi-yearly removing lead from the berms. That lead is then put into containers, barrels, and then we sell the lead to licensed reclaimers. So if you see, God, I'll date myself being 70 years old. We used to call them guys that would deal with the junk metal and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But now they have fancier names. But anyway, we sell to them, and then they recycle the lead. That's a great beneficial yeah, use. Thank right. you. Right. So there's that one. Are you taking down many trees? No trees at all. Okay. Um, are you um, accounting for any additional stormwater controls? Erosion yes, that's controls? part of that DEP plan. We have a master plan for DEP okay. that was on it. And uh, we have some vegetation barriers that have to be done. And we have to have a filter area uh, prior to it getting over to a stream. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Best of luck. Other comments or questions? Uh, Roger. Um, basically, I, I have no problem with this at all. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make a comment, though. A um, couple of comments. I actually drove through there the other day. Good. <laughs> so Good. I'm not so, so sure about your security. I had never <laughs> been on the property before, 
Yeah. So I was out in that area, so I decided just to drive through there. Yeah. And so there was nobody there. Um. Bob? <laughs> <laughs> the right man's in the audience. Uh -oh. what, what time was it? Uh, midday. Midday? Because yeah. if, if they're open for trap, okay, yeah. then the gate would be up. You would have went in and you would have saw a gate standing straight up. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I didn't see a soul in there. Yeah, anyway. did you go way, way yeah, up? Maybe, maybe. I'm thinking law yeah. enforcement. Yeah, yeah we, we, we need, excuse That's me, okay. we, we need all of this to be on the mic, so. That's um, okay. Yeah. Do you, the only other comment I'd make is, um, you know, I've lived in Scarborough since 79, and mm -hmm. I really didn't know that much about this whole facility yeah. until AT&T wanted mm -hmm. to put a tower up there, and I think, did you come and talk to us at that I point? came and talked with you also on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I was just impressed with a facility of that magnitude mm -hmm. in this town, you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, so basically, I, I don't have a problem with this. Yeah. Rick, did you have? Yeah, it looks like you're adding some plumbing fixtures, a couple of bathrooms. Yes. Is your septic system that you currently have? We're, we're working with, yeah, we're working with Sebago Technics okay. to make sure that that is, being in a sand pit, it'll probably pass with their inspection, but we are aware of that. Okay. Uh, we will make sure of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. I think your mm -hmm. renderings kind of lead yeah. to a nice site as you come in and the way you've done yeah. And dealt yep. with the basement level right. actually kind of being partly mm -hmm. uh, there now, and you're only building a one story, but it's actually two right. two floors of functionality. Yep. We're sensitive to the fact of, of our handicapped people in the club also. We have wheelchair shooters, yep. and uh, the old club, if you go back to the 40s and 50s, there was no design in there whatsoever for any type of handicap access. Uh, there was no design for a lady's toilet either. Uh, since then, we've added that. We've we've made all of that stuff come alive. So we we think we think we we're either meeting or exceeding every ordinance. And I know we've come and talked with the code officers to make sure that we've got that. Uh, the plans are with the uh, state fire marshal and we've adhered to that and made a couple changes there to make sure we, we made that all right, too. So we're trying to do our best to make it the best, as they say. Great. I think yep. it looks great. So yep. with that, Madam Chair, I don't have anything. Thank you. Um, I have just one observation, and that is uh, when you come back before us for a site review, uh, we are going to be looking, I think, at parking because it sounds as though you're going to get a lot more people coming in, uh, and I think some of your parking is going to disappear because of the addition. It was kind of hard for me to tell, but that's something that we are going to want yeah. to take a look at, and especially increases yeah. in impervious areas. Yeah, we're, we're aware of that. None of the project is on a permeable area. Okay, what we've done is contained ourselves so the building addition would stay on impermeable area, which DEP liked that a lot. Uh, the uh, other piece of, of, of that is that we took, and if you look at uh, closely, you'll see that we've brought the handicap parking into the front of the building, and it is paved. That would be our only paved parking area because, once again, we understand that the preference is that if you do have handicapped parking, that you pave the parking. So we are paving additional handicapped spaces in there. We have got a ton of area for parking. Uh, we really do. And I'll make sure that when we come back in that I've got a plan that shows that in detail to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I think the sense of the board is that we recommend uh, the miscellaneous uh, appeal, that we, our advisory opinion is that this meets the criteria of the zoning ordinance, and we wish you well with this. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody's looking forward to this one. Uh, by the way, everything you see here, the plans that you see, both civil and architectural, 
were donated to the club by uh, the people who designed the plans. Um, and we're looking forward to the fact that we have many people in the club who are licensed plumbers, licensed electricians, and uh, we're surely going to uh, put their services to work too. Thank you very much. Thank you, good luck. All right, uh, I know we only have one group left, but we're still, we are going to take a five-minute break, and we still could probably have a record leaving here uh, with all of our work done. Um, but I feel constrained to say that if we are still here at 10 o'clock, we take nothing new after 10 o'clock. So, thank you. Five minutes. All right, if we can come together again. We, we have two related items before us. Uh, the first one, 
is LLC Holdings, L, uh, LC Holdings, LLC, requests a site inventory and analysis review as part of a planned development project for 31 Higus Parkway, assesses map R50, lot 34D. Jamel. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is located in the Higus Parkway zoning district, located along Higus Parkway. So the first item tonight is the site inventory and analysis phase of the plan development review process. And as you guys are well aware, the site inventory and analysis is intended to provide the applicant board and staff with a better understanding of the overall site and opportunities and or constraints that the natural and built environment create for the development of the site. The board should be sure to determine if the information provides a clear understanding of the site and identifies opportunities and constraints that will guide utilization. So staff is generally comfortable with the submission as provided. Uh, we did note um, that the site inventory plan should include vegetative cover and groundwater hydrology conditions on the property. The applicant did provide some information uh, related to vegetative cover within their narrative, um, and the board should provide direction on your comfort with these materials. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. And from the applicant. Members of the board, my name is Todd Gammon. I'm a civil engineer with Blaze Civil Engineers. I'm here tonight with uh, Jeff and Christina Charette. They're the owners of the lot and also the applicant under their entity, LC Holdings. Also with us tonight is Matt Provincial with Muller Architects. I'm not sure if someone took the clicker from me. Um, I, I, I also think you're going to need to pull that. Um, it sounds as though you're... The mic is not working well. You hear me? No, I can't. Okay. Thank you. Didn't see that. So as Jamel mentioned, we are, I think the, do you have the site context plan, Jamel? Sure. So as Jamel mentioned, we're in the Highest Parkway zone. Um, they're the sole owners of the 17 and a half acre parcel. Uh, the proposed drive entrance is going to be across from the Horizon Solutions building to give you some uh, general sense of the area. To the north, I'm sure you're well aware of the Foley's Fitness project right there. And the uh, salt pump is across the street up to the north. And then as I mentioned, right across from our proposed entrance is the uh, Horizon Solutions building. Um, they're excited to talk about their proposed project, which is called the Borrow, which is a proposed restaurant. Um, one of the reasons we were originally going to do a sketch plan application, but due to the, the threshold of the area of the parcel, which is almost 17 and a half acres, we were required to go through the site inventory and analysis and master plan stage, and we submitted both tonight due to the, the uh, to the fact that our building is less than, in our proposed footprints, less than five acres. So um, things are fairly simple. Out of the 17 and a half acre parcel, uh, I would say about 16 acres is wetlands and trees. Uh, we've got about an acre and a half along Hygus that uh, gives us the opportunity to do, uh, in the uplands, to do the proposed project. This lot is actually, um, considered lot nine of an original subdivision called the from the Higus Parkway Professional Center, I believe it was called back in 2006. Uh, so we were one of five lots and Foley's was included in that, Horizon Solutions was as well. Um, so there was or is um, a few existing permits including uh, DOT permitting and DEP permitting uh, that were tethered to. Um, the site generally uh, drains in a easterly uh, pattern. It's the, the site slopes up closer to Hygus are only about 5%. As you get further east, they're about 1% uh, draining to the south. We're essentially surrounded by trees. Uh, there's still quite a bit of buffer even with the Foley's development. Um, one of the things that came up in the comments was the uh, uh, discussion about the trees. I didn't go into too much detail because there was nothing that was significant out there. I would say about 60% of the trees are evergreens, 40% are maples, uh, a lot of blow downs, obviously a wet area with the wetlands, uh, nothing over 24 inches. I would say the average size is 
in the range of 10 inches uh, to give you an idea. Uh, they did get the uh, DEP site location permit back in 06. That was revised a few times. So this land, uh, there was some harvesting of the trees years ago up along the Hygus uh, uh, where we're showing our proposed development. And at the entrance, they were, as I mentioned, tethered to a DEP, DOT permit. And as part of that permit, it was a requirement that our proposed drive entrance come in across from the Horizon Solutions entrance. And they gave some dimensions on what that needed to be with a, a right and left exit and uh, one entry. Um, just looking down through some of the other comments, uh, we are going to submit to the IFNW. We don't expect anything to come out of that because, as I mentioned, they've, they're already under a permit. They've been through this process. Um, and we're going to be doing some geotechnical borings actually on Monday and expect that, uh, you know, higher groundwater and some compressible clays out there. Uh, so we're interested in getting that data back. We plan to fill the site a little bit um, for the grading. And one of the things on the lot, we do have an easement, and it's an access easement, uh, right at our entrance over to lot eight, which is to the south of ours. So we will be sharing, if anyone did a development on there, we would be sharing the driveway entrance with that lot that was, uh, that was decided years ago during the permitting back in 06. Um, in terms of... In terms of other inventory items, I'm happy to answer any questions. The, uh, in terms of the site constraints, fairly obvious. Uh, like I mentioned, we're here tonight really do a threshold on overall acreage. There's no intention of doing a, a campus plan. I think that's what it's more set up to be for the master plan and connectivity with multiple buildings. We're talking about a 4,800 square foot building, uh, 60 by 80. Uh, around 50 plus parking spaces. We're trying to limit the amount of impervious area as much as we can, keeping it um, tucked up close to the Hygus Parkway to stay out of the wetlands, limit the amount of environmental impact, and uh, happy to take any questions on the inventory component of this. If there is any public member in the room who would like to speak at this time, please step forward. Seeing none, you know, turn to the board. Robin? I waited till you... I know, you know. perfect, perfect timing, right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, yeah, the, the constraints seem fairly straightforward in this. I'm just wondering when the wetlands were officially delineated and were there any vernal pools identified? He, I did see that note. He, we had uh, Broadwater Environmental go out in the fall, so we've updated it. Obviously, they oh, did good. it back oh. in 06, but okay. we, we knew we were going to have to update that. Okay. So what's reflected on those plans, I think later um, it'll be on the master plan. I've got the actual wetlands delineation, got the report in hand. That'll be submitted during the site plan application Great. stage. Um, the other luxury of the timing of them moving forward now is he is going to go back out in the window in April. That's what I was going to ask next. Right. So Absolutely. we're, we're going to look for course. any potential. Uh, right on. Okay. And um, I see that you had a letter to the historic yes. society. Yes. Yeah. Already have response. Nothing. Nothing historically, okay. archaeologically. Yeah, and I would imagine probably the town did that when they developed yeah. the yeah. highest professional district. So um, do you also have access to any endangered species or beginning with habitat information in this area? Yeah, we have... Uh, Word back from um, the main natural areas program, nothing to see there. Okay. And then we're coordinating with IFNW and I'll have any correspondence for this with the Was site there already an environmental, like a phase one or a phase two site assessment done or anything like that? For an ESA? Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, this has been. Okay. So the borings that you're doing are just it's all strictly geotechnic geotechnical. Geotechnically related. Okay. related, groundwater for stormwater BMPs, and okay. obviously foundation design. I think what's going to be important in the in the future submissions then is that we understand what's going to happen with unsuitable soils too, because I think you you know, not you know I know that there's you 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 did a great job of um, you know saying what the county survey is, but mm -hmm. when those get removed and when you go to actually build the footing, 
some of them may not have the bearing capacity that you're looking for there. So just knowing, yeah. knowing that you're not going to take the unsuitable soils and deposit them in a wetland really is, is <laughs> what we're looking for kind of a thing. So I just want to say it up front, but I yeah. think, you know. So, I mean, we've got some, yeah, we've got some scantics and, uh, uh, you know, CD soils, obviously, for the rest of the wetlands. Up, yep. up, upland is uh, Deerfield, AB, but I'm still expecting some Good. compressible clays there, higher groundwater, mm -hmm. and obviously, if there, we were excavating any material we couldn't reuse, we're not using it under the parking lot, but I expect to fill the area a bit. You don't have to get any Army Corps permits for any reason or anything like that. Are you anticipating a Tier 1, Tier 2, or anything? Yeah, so this was... Cur this was also tethered to an Army Corps permit. Okay. So they were tied to a certain amount of disturbance back in 06. So okay. if we actually stayed under that disturbance, we could technically go out yep. and build yep. today. So yep. we are amending the DEP SLOTA um, okay. because I'm tweaking the BMP okay. design a bit. Um, and we're probably going to disturb a, a little more wetlands than they paid for back in 06. So that means yeah. I will be amending the okay. Army Corps piece. And just so you know, too, and I'm, you know, kind of, uh, there's been a lot of development out there. There have been some yeah. really, um, really exciting developments out yeah. there, too. So it's it would just be, you know, it would behoove you guys, too, to take a look at what's come in front of us lately to just, it, that's going to be such a cool community out there. Mm -hmm. So thank you Absolutely. for putting the work in, and I'm all set, Madam Chair. Customers. Thank you. Roger, nothing? All set? Okay. Jen? Same. I'm all set. All right. Um, and I actually, you responded to the questions that I had about the trees, um, the mature trees on the property. And were any, I guess I had a question, were any of the uh, mature trees in the buffering area? And are you going to, I assume, leave them up or what? Yeah, so the 25-foot buffer, there are some in that area. Um, and yes, we are going to leave them up. We're adding to the buffer. So you're going to see that on a full landscape plan and the 25-foot buffer all the way across, all the way along Hygus, up the front, along the parking lot in front of the building. And I was going to speak to that a little bit. But yes, we're going to be adding, maintaining as much as we can. All right, thank you. And the uh, you mentioned a meadow area. I assume that that's the cutover. Yes, that's essentially what I'm, when I speak to the meadow, it's really what they've already uh, done for the, uh, when they got the clearing permit. So essentially it's just a meadow area in that acre and a half that's adjacent to uh, Hygus right now. You can walk down in there, our whole parking lot. There's no trees that'll be removed for any of that. Um, and over towards the building, all, I think the tree lines are the, on the majority of the five drawings that I provided. So um, not a lot of any, even elimination of any trees. And no eastern cottontail habitat there in that meadow area? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, well, long-eared long bats make. <laughs> Usually they make the comment that you're not allowed to clear trees in the June or July time frame, but we're, there's not a lot, actually, that we're going to be doing anymore. All right, uh, this does not require a motion for approval. Um, is the board generally comfortable with what's outlined here? Thank you very much. Uh, we, and now we can move on to the, uh, the next phase of this. The applicant is before us. LC Holdings LLC requests a master plan review as part of a planned development project. The 31 Hikers Parkway assesses map R50, lot 34D. I'm going to forego the public hearing since no members of the public have come in to join us. Uh, Jamel. Thank you. Um, so moving on to master plan. Um, so the applicant's proposing a 4,800 square foot building uh, that will consist of a restaurant and bar space. So as a reminder, the master plan phase is intended to generally lay out how the plan development will be developed including uh, proposed use of various parts of the site, the primary road pedestrian network, and the overall approach to stormwater management. The board shall approve the master plan only if it finds it complies with the zoning standards and is consistent with the site inventory and analysis. Given that the project is located within the Willowdale Brook watershed, uh, which has been designated as threatened by Maine DEP, 
Staff has offered several uh, comments related to the proposed parking design with the intent of hopefully reducing impervious surface where possible. Staff has also noted that the zoning ordinance requires a 25-foot landscape buffer along the Highgate Parkway frontage and has uh, recommended the applicant place the proposed utility lines um, within the site's driveway in order to maintain the buffer. And finally, there appears to be an opportunity to provide for some pedestrian amenities, uh, mostly within the large island in the parking area, along with a, some sort of crosswalk across the loop driveway to help pedestrians enter and exit the building's entrance. I'll turn it back to you. So in terms of layout, um, like I mentioned before, essentially our, our drive entrance was picked for us with the uh, prior DOT permitting. So we have two exit lanes and uh, there was an island required and uh, one oncoming lane. The, the impervious area, we're, we're trying to reduce the footprint as, as much as possible, including the impervious. There's no benefit to, to anyone to do that. The building is a 60 by 80. Uh, I believe there's 43 required parking spaces based on their use. Uh, there was a note uh, with a potential traffic uh, conflict that came up with potentially eliminating two or three of the spaces, uh, which would give us around 55 spaces total. So not too many more beyond what's required. Uh, most of what's driving that, I was going to ask for a waiver on the, the drive aisles, which is uh, required 25 feet. I was going to go to 24. What drives this is we use the auto turn. Um, currently, I'm using a BUS 45, but I want to talk to the fire department as to what is required there. I think there was a comment made on the loops in front of the building and around. That's pretty much the width that's going to be required to get a fire truck through there. So that's really what's driving that, or I would, I would narrow that. Um, the intent for stormwater, there is a culvert that crosses under high guess. We're going to carry that flow through on a separate, uh, I think shown on the infrastructure plan, separate culvert. The intent is to treat 95% of the area of the impervious and 80% of the total developed to meet the DEP standards. Uh, hopefully intend to do that with the underrain soil filter. Going to get a little bit of groundwater uh, data information from the geotech on, on Monday. Hope to get his report a few weeks after that. We may use a filter to treat um, some of the roof impervious, bring that down into one um, downspout area and uh, try to treat that adjacent to the building to the north. Uh, we'll have a, um, a little deck out back, maybe a uh, bituminous walk to the west of the building along high, I guess, just to access some doors. Um, but yes, that's the whole intent, looking at snow storage, lighting, um, trying to minimize the footprint as best we can. Um, obviously, one of the bigger standards within the Highest Parkway zone is the 25-foot buffer. So as I mentioned, we're not going to be eliminating any trees along there. We're going to be uh, actually adding to the area with some trees and some shrubs, including in front of the building to the west along Highest. Um, I could go down through some of the comments. Obviously, there was a number of comments on impervious, which we're in favor of. And I do want to follow up with the with the fire department on that, just to make sure I'm using the right vehicle that they would have to get through there. Um, in terms of the threatened stream, we're going to be meeting DEP uh, standards for the amendment. Uh, we've already met with the DEP. Angela Blanchett, the town engineer, was at the meeting. Uh, the biggest component of the meeting was obviously just stormwater. They didn't really have, uh, wasn't a big high on the radar thing in terms of many other things. There was only a few checklist items that we have to go through for the amendment, and then we're going to update the Army Corps component. Um, one of the things that uh, that did come up was the just the use of the soil filter. Um, in terms of the um, the island, uh, so we have a center island there. We are hoping to meet looking ahead to the site plan application phase, the 10 to 15% landscape. We were hoping to do some things in that island, also be able to plow some snow in there, also be able to put some uh, light poles in that area. The intention was just to have them walk in the uh, parking area up to the building, keep it uh, 
you know, fairly simple, didn't want to add impervious area if we, if we didn't have to, trying to make it convenient where we're showing the, the, uh, the dumpster location. Um, there was a comment on the potentially moving the transformer pad. I haven't had any in, inter interface with our uh, uh, MEP designer with the mechanical electrical plumbing, but uh, obviously we're hoping to come off a, a pole in high guess and go directly to that transformer. We're going to be able to buffer that with some plantings. We weren't intending to put a, a stockade fence around the transformer. I don't typically see that, but uh, we are going to uh, have it around the dumpster pad. I would like to have it fairly in a fairly close proximity to the building, and I'm not sure um, who had made that comment, but um, typically CMP wants it fairly close access to the edge of pavement too, so we only have so many options of where to put that depending on where the utilities come in, but we, we do intend to, to buffer that. Um, as I mentioned before, we are likely going to ask for a waiver that they suggest on the 25-foot aisle width to 24. Uh, the building will be sprinkled, so I'm not sure if the fire department will require a hydrant. Um, I'm thinking not. We have a hydrant across the street, which is shown on the plan. I don't know. Typically, that's well within distance. Um, and if a hydrant is required, then we would likely need a 6-inch uh, fire line. If it isn't, then we definitely wouldn't need a 6-inch for this building. Usually, the PWD wants a 2-inch um, domestic and this may be a four inch or something on the on the sprinkler so we'll reduce that uh, but we will be uh, as I mentioned sitting with the fire department on that component as well uh, there was a comment on depicting a buffer to the south which is adjacent to the loop road uh, at our entrance um, we're happy to do that it's all wooded on that side now that area that's lot eight could be developed but we could add some plantings in that area I also want to create a swale so I can get it down to the soil filter because you're one of the challenges is just trying to meet that DEP standard of 95%. So uh, what you end up doing is wrapping drainage swales so you can get them, you know, the intent is to sheet off the pavement, have some curbing at the entrance, stop the curbing and allow things to sheet across pavement. We'll have some curbing at the, the center island. And I was going to ask if it was a, a standard in Scarborough to have granite at the entrance of Hygis. I didn't know if that was going to be something that came up with a site plan application. Um, so again, limiting the amount of uh, wetland impact, which is being sensitive to the amount of fills that we're going to place as well. Um, they mentioned the wetland delineation. A formal report has been completed, will be, will be submitted with the DEP. So we're fairly far along, way beyond the master plan stage. Uh, we are. Uh, aware of the graphic representations that you'd like to see. Uh, we do have some architectural uh, drawings that we'd like to show you tonight in terms of colors and material types to give you an idea. Um, we will be doing a photometrics plan. We'll have a full landscape plan and obviously meeting the DEP standards on the, D on the stormwater. Um, I understand that we'll, we'll be going through Scarborough Sanitary District as well assuming they're going to want a grease trap with a restaurant component and a manhole on our property. Usually they want a testing manhole and connect in. One of the, uh, one of the items that also came up in the comments that I wanted to speak to, if you bring up the infrastructure plan, Jamel. Um, so the intent was, obviously, you can see the location of the building. We have gravity sewer and we have gas on our side of Hygis, the water is on the opposite side, so that would be a trench across. So the hope was to go through, you can see where the property ends, so the majority would be out into the DOT right away. So there would be some trees to clear if we put the utilities in that location. We would be recreating the buffer and we'd be replanting some trees and some shrubs in that area in, in addition, including along the full 25 foot length along the parking lot but we would obviously not try to put it right directly on top of the piping um, in case you ever had to maintain in the future. But the intention would be to recreate that. We would like to um, put that out there because obviously financially it would be a much smarter move. Um, I don't know. The, the, the comment was could you come down or we should consider coming down the parking lot and exiting through our uh, 
drive entrance, you can see the, the, uh, the amount of distance that would create. I'm not sure that that's necessarily a, um, a good thing. I'd also have, want to look at the, the depth of the sanitary sewer there as I start lengthening out, trying to gravity flow down to there. I don't want to be in a pumps, pump situation when you don't have to have to be, but we have a, literally a pole UP16 that's probably 40 feet from the building. So we were hoping to come down there, underground electric over to the transformer, bring it right into the, the building, um, cross Hygus once, bring in the domestic and the fire protection line. We'll look into the hydrant issue, but obviously limiting the lengths of those, limiting the cost of the project, we're trying to really uh, reduce the footprint and, and the cost of this as best we can. So hopefully you guys will uh, consider uh, the, the uh, comment that was made and be open to tying in the utilities right there if we recreate um, with, a, with an acceptable plan with some trees and, and some shrubs in that area. So happy to, happy to take any questions. All right, Jen, do you want to go? Sure. Okay, what's on? Um, uh, okay, sorry. First, my first question um, may actually be for staff, but I have the same sort of comment about whether or not the median, it kind of looks like it's shown as a hardscape treatment, but knowing the sensitivity of this area for impervious is that something that could be um, landscaped instead, you know, providing it was low enough not to um, cause a problem with site distance or anything like that? Um, agree with some of the staff comments on internal uh, head circulation, but also, again, being sensitive to um, the impervious area count. I think probably you're, um, you know, You'll work that out, landscaping and, and whatnot. Um, I did have a question about the parking spaces that there are. Um, it does seem like you're providing a fair amount over what's required, and I was just wondering what was driving that number. Uh, I just think that it was a general feel for what they thought. I mean, I had mentioned that there was 43 triggered. They had looked at some other businesses and actually we counted some spaces and we thought about the business plan and um, didn't think it was too much of a stretch to ask for 10 or 12 additional spaces, especially since we're really trying to limit the fo overall footprint as best we can. <clears throat> I know it's there's not too many restaurants here that have a lot of extra parking, so it's probably... Right. I, I sort of know that, asking the question, but also, you know, it is kind of a... Um, an increase over what's required. So I guess I would just um, ask about whether or not there's the opportunity to maybe bank some parking um, to preserve that option. If if you get into a situation where you do need parking, at least you've graded out around it or um, run utilities elsewhere, um, preserving that option, but that could help um, eliminate, again, some impervious area if it turns out they're not. Um, necessary. Um, the other uh, question I had, and I think, um, so on sheet, actually 101 and 102, the diagonal line that's shown, is that the easement line that you're talking about to the lot 8 to the south? Yes, it's a lightly dashed. Yeah, just kind of like. Yeah, <laughs> right the there. Line. Yes. That. Okay. So, so that's. So any, any abutting development that comes in could, in theory, access, like share your access anywhere in that space? That was the intent of the loop around towards them to as kind of a call out. And I was actually going to show um, maybe even a dash bump out of where that could potentially connect. Um, so yes, okay. between the easement, their access, and the fire truck, that was, that yeah. was the intent of that. I know. Those trucks are so big. Um, I guess the only other question I have is about whether or not angled parking was considered here. It, just sort of looking at this, um, it looks to me like the majority 
I don't know, I just feel like you would come in and loop around that way anyway, and um, knowing that that configuration could potentially shrink up the, um, the paved surface for the um, parking stalls mm -hmm. if you do need to keep the width in the loops on either end for, for fire access. Um, it might be just enough to kind of help, you know, help with some of that. Generally, I know, I don't know, angled parking isn't like my favorite, but um, yeah. it's, it, it is an option. We haven't considered so. at this point, I mean, it was set up to be two-way, both ways. Um, so the 90 degree obviously is uh, more of a practical ability to, to do that, not knowing uh, which way people are going, but could consider it. Um, I think that's it, other than just the hats off to you guys for developing one and a half to two acres on a 17 acre wetland <laughs> site. <laughs> um, so that's all I have. Rick? Yeah, I, the only thing that puzzles me is the location of the transformer. It's just, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And it's not the intent, is it the intent to bring a overhead wire into that transformer or are you going under from the pole on Haggis? I haven't had interaction with the electrical engineer yet. We will for the, the site plan, but uh, my assumption is that we'd come underground electric to that. Um, now, I also know that in other projects I've done, including restaurants, if the load, I, I used to hear the trigger less than 1,000 amps, they could have the transformer on the pole. Mm -hmm. So I'm showing it now okay. just as a precaution, thinking yeah. that I'm just thinking of the commercial kitchen space and the amount of amps that they might be pulling here that we Is might. Is this going to be pizza? Are you going to have pizza ovens or no, what, what, what's the... What's the plan for the food? <laughs> Do I have to go to the mic? Or? No. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina. Um, so the menu is going to be comprised of bruschetta boards, cheese boards, cured meats. So tapas style. So it's um, like sharing plates, um, maybe some spiced nuts, deviled eggs. Um, and we're only going to be serving wine and beer, so no liquor. Does that answer Next. your question? Well, yeah, I just okay. wanted to find out what's coming into town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the um, restaurant to choose from. The, the kitchen, though, is going to operate a little bit differently than a traditional restaurant. Um, the kitchen is actually available for rent as well. So it's going to be divided into two sections. One section will be um, operated and used for the restaurant, for the borough. So my menu, I'll have my own little prep sta station, and I'll have my own storage uh, area. And then the rest of it can be rented out during the day for specialty food producers. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Fort Food Labs in Portland, mm -hmm. but something similar to that. Um, and it's a carry-in, carry-out situation. And then we're hoping on evenings and weekends to bring in chefs from surrounding towns. And they will essentially own their own restaurant for the evening. So they'll be renting our kitchen, they'll be renting a private room um, in the restaurant, and they'll be also renting our staff. So. It's a neat concept. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Sounds entertaining. Um, um, on that note, I would hope that any exhaust fans or anything like that, is your, do you plan on putting a pitch roof in? Or is, is it a flat roof? I don't know what the pitch is. I'll let Matt speak to that. But. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's only, there's only one file in I, I just want to uh, remind folks that this is a master plan, but what we found is uh, if we can spotlight some areas during this discussion for a master plan, uh, it allows you to start thinking about areas where you may want to reconsider something, add something. Uh, so I appreciate your willingness to, to go a little further than the master plan here. Um, Matt Provencal from Mark Mueller Architects. So um, maybe Jamal, hit one more page. And there's these are just kind of conceptual sketches right now. We're just looking at massing shapes, uh, differences in materials, um, so none of these colors are really defined, but just different colors and tones. 
Um, so yes, we will need to screen any mechanical exhaust um, that we come out of the roof. So we have lower roof near the kitchen area and then towards the seating and dining area we have taller roofs uh, overlooking that back forested wetland area. That's really where the view is. That's where the sun is. Um, we don't really want to sit and watch tractor trailer trucks drive by. So, um, so yes, any, any exhaust systems and mechanical devices will be architecturally screened um, in some fashion. Nice. The roof, the roof slope is, is predominantly flat right here. We have a, a feature roof at the entry. Um, so you kind of come in and as a grand entry, that's, that's sloped a little bit. Um, predominantly flat roofs, internally drained, and, and we'll work with Todd to take care of that storm water and roof, roof uh, water. Okay. It generally, I think you've covered all the basis for what uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing on the next round here, and uh, uh, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for my palate, mm -hmm. and we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Robin. Yeah. Um, yeah, I certainly appreciate the additional information. I think it does provide you all a little more efficiencies, too, in your, your time here. So, um, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, Todd, did you know that DEP put out a recent fact sheet about threatened watersheds that you may want to look at? I think it's probably happened just after you met with Angela and Aubrey kind of okay. a thing. But you're on. You're totally on the right track as far as what to do in a threatened watershed kind of a thing. Did, are, are you including drip line trench? Yeah, we, I was going to. Okay. Since it's, Matt mentioned the internal drainage, I think we had talked about that before. I was considering doing instead of a drip line edge around the whole building. Yeah. If it's internally drained, I can convey yeah. it anywhere I want. Probably yeah. go out to a small filter. Because what they're really trying to do is just get you to infiltrate the non chlorine you know any any chlorides kind of a thing infiltrate anything non-chloride but but really pay attention to where salt and sand are going to be used kind of a thing especially with under drain soil filters and things like that but those are um, always a challenge with higher ground always water. i know <laughs> and and really what they're looking for too when in the fact sheet is how you're going to manage salt applications kind of a thing they're looking for a wish list of like heated sidewalks and things like that and with all the solar things you know maybe that'll happen but um but yeah it's a new fact sheet which you know i'm going to be plugging on the planning board because it just came out i want to say within the last week or two kind of a thing okay. but i feel like this project is in a place where you could at least be open and receptive to it um if one drop of water escaped this their lot i would be very surprised <laughs> <laughs> well and that's where i think we can go as far as you know sort of negotiating with the additional parking spaces kind of a thing is you could maybe tweak that 0.95 you know uh percent treatment uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 0 0.95 of the, the impervious area. And what is it for the landscaped area, like 0 0.65? 95 or 0 .8? and 80. 95 and 80. Maybe you could tweak that up a little bit so that, because the idea is to make sure that you're sequestering the, you know, the, the drainage on site kind of a thing. But I think there's definitely things that we can work with here. I'm a little confused, though, about the center islands. Because mm -hmm. at one point, I he thought I heard you say that you may try to use them for snow storage. And then I saw in the staff memo that they might have wanted to use them for pedestrian access or pedestrian traffic. Our intention wasn't to put a sidewalk there. They had mentioned that in the staff okay. comments, happy to get feedback. Okay. Uh, our intention was to attempt to meet the 10 to 15% landscape, have those have some landscaping in there. Um, and not add more impervious. I think it's. Yes. I think we determined that it was fine for them to walk in the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the drive lanes to get up to the restaurant. Okay. Be able to hide the light pole bases in there, and then maybe depending yeah. on how we locate things, we could use that for some snow storage as well. But I'm going to have plenty of area around. Okay. And I think with what you've provided us here, I don't think anybody, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think the narrowed to 24 feet, I don't think is going to be an issue, but just know that we, we probably do want to negotiate the back and forth on the extra parking spaces, considering that you are in this threatened watershed. But as you said, if there, you know, not a drop is going to leave the, the site, then, then let's, let's, uh, let's, let's use that as, as, as sort of the, um, the starting line kind of thing. Um, uh, 
Good evening, Jeff Charette. I live at 25 Pine Ledge Drive, so I am a resident of Scarborough with my wife. Um, so thanks for meeting with us. We're excited. You know, um, I've been in the town. I moved in in 2002. I've seen the growth of this town. We've got two two uh, young children in the school system, so you know we're we're heavily involved in the in the town. Um, but I wanted to to what board member Jennifer said. Um, we know that there's other restaurants in town um, that have parking issues. Um, none such brewery. They've got 54 parking spots. <clears throat> but on Friday night, there were 17 cars parked along Gorham Road. Mm -hmm. No lighting, no sidewalk, no pedestrian access, nothing. Um, I can't imagine people wanting to park on Hygis Parkway. Um, Dunstan Tap and Table, 64 parking spots. Um, they run out of room. Yeah, so, and I just I want to I want to I want to <laughs> I want to be. No, nope, I know negotiate exactly. Negotiate back you're going and forth on and parking spots, and but they are yeah. at a premium. I think you have the perfect opportunity here. I guess is what I'm saying, not to have a none such river brewing happen, or not to have a, what's the other one down by the landing there, where where you have the offsite parking. Right. We to we wanna that. we wanna work with you. Okay. I, this is what I'm saying. We have the perfect opportunity here right. to work with you, and I apologize. If I it might came have misunderstood off. that. Yes. Yeah. No. Sounded not like at all. you wanted to take away spots. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's uh, what we're dealing with, though, is just sort of mitigating the additional impervious area because you are in a very sensitive watershed sure. kind of a thing. Right. So, so please. Okay. I mean, I think that. <laughs> You're on the right track here, and I think it's important that we are discussing this now so you don't get, de you know, 50 to 75 percent of the way down the road with your architect and your engineer, and we're, you know, finally just bringing it up to you. So I think you're in a great position here. Okay. And, I'm, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not promising you that all of my uh, peers um, agree, but I think you're in a, a very good position with where you're at, and as, as Jennifer mentioned, you're using a very challenging site for a very, one of his highest and best uses. I think you're doing a great job. Well, yeah, thank you. I was yeah. very surprised with what in 2006 they were proposing to put on this lot <laughs> and trying to think of what they would have done with parking there on a two story, yeah. 15,000 square foot building office yeah. duplex. So I yeah. think this is probably, like you said, the best usage of this yeah. land here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're doing amazing things here and the fact that we've gotten this far it's almost like we've gotten halfway through a, a, a site plan review too so so keep doing what you're doing and um let me just see if there was anything else it, you know for me it's just you know location 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 it's willowdale brook and what can we do to yeah to you know just maximize that sort of give and take there todd but you're on a really good path great team here and look forward to to come checking it out and seeing who's going to rent the kitchens. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Roger. Um, I think my colleagues have covered most of the areas. Um, the only thing I would just want to bring up is uh, something that was in the staff comments, and it pertained to the three parking spots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, consider maybe eliminating those. Yeah, we. Could, I was going to talk to the client about yeah. that. Yep. Um, but I, I tend to agree with you, with the owner. You know, the prospective owners regarding the parking. Um, when I first looked at it, it looked like a lot of parking compared to that building. But it, you know, I can uh, uh, understand why you want it. Um, that that about is. That's about all I have. Uh, I think it. I think it going to be terrific. Uh, just as a curiosity, do you own another restaurant anywhere around? No. No, okay. I own a specialty food company. So. Oh, okay. All right, good. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm all set. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, uh, first of all, I, full disclosure, I live about three-quarters of a mile away, so I'm happy to see this. Um, <laughs> she wants a sidewalk to her house. <laughs> yeah, no, could you yeah, to yeah. a sidewalk up Scotto Hill. The... Um, I do have something that you said raised one question with me, and I think it's something you're going to have to think a little bit about, and that is if you have chefs coming in with um, their food and whatever else they need, you're going to have some trucks in there, and you're going to have to think about parking for what would be, I guess, the equivalent of catering trucks. 
Um, and it might be that you've got a couple of spaces there that you're going to have to restripe to make them larger to accommodate some of the larger trucks. You don't have to answer now, but a, as you start to think about matching your business model with the site plans, um, those are the sort of things that you're going to have to think about. And you may actually end up with a few, one fewer parking sites in order to accommodate uh, catering trucks or the equivalent that come in. Uh, I, I understand and, and I sympathize with the issue of ensuring that we have as little impermeable uh, area as possible, but I'm also worried about pedestrians uh, walking through the parking lot, especially in the circle around the front door. As people start to leave the restaurant, most people are going to end up circling right around the front door and then out onto Higus Parkway. That's a natural way for people to go, and you're going to have pedestrians walking along there. Consider what sort of pedestrian safety devices you might put up there, whether it's a couple of bollards someplace, a crosswalk that's very clearly marked, something that, that tells the drivers to slow down, uh, and the pedestrians that you know, look both ways, but this is, this is a good way to go. So that's something uh, to think about. Um, I was a supporter of uh, Fork Food Lab uh, when it was in its development. I like the concept that's there. I really appreciate this concept. Um, tell me when you've got David's coming and I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> um, and uh, I think um, it's going to be something different on Hikers Parkway and it's going to be something that's going to attract people to the parkway. It's not just people, it's going to be a destination, I think. Uh, so I really appreciate the thought and effort that you're putting into this. I'm uh, very happy that you're coming to the, uh, that you're coming to, to Scarborough. I do have one quick thing. I know it's late, sorry. I just want to make sure that the board considers the utility approach. And if you're just, a, you know, let the applicant know the utilities within the buffer, um, if you're comfortable with them replanting or, you know, sort of what you're looking for before we leave. I think it'd be good for the applicant to know that before. Yeah, could I, could I get to just a quick, are you comfortable with uh, replanting or do you want to see it down at the, um, basically down at the entrance? Obviously down at the entrance would be preferred. Um, but I don't know the constraints. I don't know the sizing, what KDA you're going to need for the transformer and the size, but that was why I was having trouble with the current location and bringing it in underground. Um, so play around with that. See, see if you really need a transformer, number one. That would, mm -hmm. that would help answer part of that. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm not in favor of, of going right through that berm or buffer area uh, with a line set. Jen? Um, I th just, I'm just looking quickly on um, Google Earth to see what's there for existing. Um, and that's, that's sort of helpful t um, to me. I think it's pretty, it's pretty sparse yeah. to begin with, you know, if you, were, yeah. if you were slicing through and otherwise like fully forested and it was gonna look like a utility corridor cut through there, I feel like that's a little bit different, but um, I, I, you know, being sensitive to the um, the additional length that it would um, require to go back out to the driveway, I, I think I'm okay with um, going through the going through the buffer area. Robin, I'd say that um, if at all possible, and I think I say this pretty consistently on this board, I like to maintain existing landscape and existing vegetation, but you know, knowing that Jen looked at it and said it's fairly sparse, um, I wouldn't be completely opposed, but I do like the idea of taking it through the driveway. And if I could add one thing, um, remembering to, to, to before construction stops, just like we wanna try to maintain the, the buffer, the vegetation there, Let's remember to maintain the wetland too and think about how we're gonna put like boulders or some type of uh, message there to construction crews to keep them out of that kind of thing. Thanks. 
Uh, and I, I don't have a problem with the um, going through the buffer because I'm quite sympathetic. Uh, the difference of the, the, the costs, the opposing mm -hmm. costs of those. Um, on the other hand, I really want to see what you're going to do in terms of replanting uh, and recreating what's there in terms of, of that buffer. So my uh, approval is conditional upon um, a, a very robust landscape plan along there. Mm -hmm. So you have sort of a split board here, and congratulations. Yeah. That's, I'm sure, just help, really helpful to you. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but at least you get, the, you get the sense of what, yeah. the, what the issues are, and you can have a chance to think about it and think about how, uh, how you can um, bring it to us in a way that, that helps us make you know, a decision that's beneficial to you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think there's been a precedent for some of the other businesses to go straight across in the past, and that we hope you'd be open to that. Basically, it would involve several hundred extra feet to go down there, but um, I'm glad Jen looked at that because the tree line is a little <laughs> deceiving there where it is pretty sparse in the DOT right away. You might just include in, the, in your next submission just even a screenshot of, or photos if you're out there or something because... Um, yeah. It's you know it's it's pretty it's pretty see through. And if we did a combination of trees and some lower plantings, yeah, that yeah. show us what's there now and show us what you propose. Okay. And I think that that would be extremely helpful. Okay. Good. Yeah. If the board is comfortable, I have a draft motion. I move to approve the conceptual master plan titled The Borough, proposed by LC Holdings, LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Blaze Civil Engineers, dated 12720, with the following findings. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the conceptual master plan is consistent with the site inventory and analysis and reflects a reasonable utilization of the site given both environmental and built environment considerations. The conceptual master plan is also consistent with the space and bulk standards, the development standards, and other requirements for planned developments in the Higus Parkway Zoning District. During site plan review, the final location of the utilities, driveway location, and parking will be determined. The site plan submission shall address the remaining staff review comments in the memo dated 2 20 Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Any further comments? All in favor? That's unanimous. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Your, uh, no, I don't, but I know uh, <laughs> the infrastructure is important to get those on the road. It doesn't right. have to be a Tesla, but put a level uh, two charger in there, that'd be great. Uh, okay, Rick, the, we, the planning board is about to make a record adjournment if we can move. Please do. Staff report. Uh, just one item. Now, you saw my email today, and thanks for um, sort of agreeing to have a special workshop with the Downs. I think we find those to be really successful um, in talking about such a complex project. So the next phases have been proposed on the master plan, um, so we'll have that workshop on March 5th from 6 to 8 p.m., and I believe the location is still to be determined. That's it. Thank you. Administrative amendment report. There was one administrative amendment at the Oak Hill Plaza. Um, the applicant proposed a freestanding sign in front of the mixed-use building. Um, that wasn't on the site plan, um, but it seemed like it was a, the chair agreed it was a generally, you know, it was consistent with the plan, so that was approved administratively. Correspondence. Correspondence. Do we have any? That's plan. That's not a staff. Okay. It's, anybody sorry. have? Sorry. I, I, as far as I know, we've received no correspondence. Takes care of that. Planning board comments. Let's start down at this end. Uh, 
Yeah, you chaired it. I would have been nervous. <laughs> nice job. We got through it, and if I hadn't opened my mouth later, we'd probably be done five minutes earlier. <laughs> nice job. Thank you. Uh, it, only a small moment of panic when Nick said he wasn't <laughs> going to be here. <laughs> Jen? I'm all set. Uh, and the only comment I would have is, um, and I've mentioned this before to Jay and maybe to Jamal, is I, I wish somebody would take a look at the, um, the parking requirements that's in the zoning, in the okay. ordinances for the uh, restaurants. Because I, I just, they don't make sense to me at all. There's one parking space for a, t uh, a table of four, and there's um, one parking space for two employees. Now, I would bet you anything, you rarely ever see two employees driving to work together in one of these restaurants. They each bring their own vehicle. And on, you know, on, in terms of restaurants, when you go out to these, um, any of the restaurants in town, if there's a table for two, I mean for four, most of the chances there's going to be, there might be two couples with two cars. And that's it. So I, w I would like to rather see whether it's through the um, long-range planning, I don't know what the procedure is, but I would I would rather see it based on how many seats the restaurant is going is planning to have, and then I would say like, um, you know, like maybe two two spaces for three seats or something like that. But I just don't think it's adequate the way it is right now. Robin. Yeah, um, as I alluded to during um, one of the applicant presentations, um, the Long Range Planning Committee um, did hear a zoning, um, a, re a zoning amendment for the TVC Oak Hill District um, that has to do with some proper matching property lines, boundaries, and offsets. Um, it will be coming in front of the planning board. Um, and it has to do with some of what's happening down here at the at the Cheese Iron, but also the redevelopment at the Public Safety Building. Um, and so I just wanted to give you all a heads up that that will be working its way through the Town Council, and we'll want to keep our ear out for that. Um, it, and it makes it makes a lot of sense, I think, just where that sometimes we just don't have the property setbacks. Uh, queued to the, the the property town lines kind of thing so it's a fairly I think it's a, a fairly intuitive change but I just wanted to give you a heads up that that's coming and also uh, two other things one is we talked about large-scale solar arrays with the help of Rip, Rick Meinking and a great um, memo from the sustainability committee who would like to add solar arrays to the the ordinance uh, and and zoning and they have some proposed standards that are taken from other towns, so we're not recreating wheel, any wheel. And then finally, uh, the comp plan is still being massaged into sort of a, in, in, the implementation um, end of it kind of a thing. But I'll continue to keep you all posted with the Long Range Planning Committee doings. Thank you. Uh, and the Conservation Commission at its last meeting took a look at the comp plan and where we fell in that, that plan uh, and had some recommendations that I've completely forgotten. <laughs> so uh, I do want to mention something. A couple of years ago, we approved um, an apartment, a mixed-use building in the Oak Hill area. Uh, apartments on the upper two floors, I believe, and then the um, offices down below. And I will say at the time I had some reservations as to how a building that large was going to fit into that area. And I simply want to say I was wrong. The, um, it looks good. Uh, it fits in. It, it meets the, it adds to the community. It's part of the buildings. It doesn't stand out in spite of the fact that it's three stories. Uh, and I was looking, as I was looking at it, I was just simply thinking, it's got the sort of design and intent to, to fit in with the community that um, I would hope the down starts to take a look at as, as we go forward. Where, so where is that? It is, um, it, uh, yeah, Oak Hill Plaza area. Yeah, you know where the new Infinity Credit Union is? Yeah. It's uh, two buildings back. You can see it from Route 1. 
Yeah, so just, that has a residential component on the Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. There are, no, there's no. two levels. Uh, there are eight one-bedroom apartments. Uh, and then the, the bottom level is uh, office space. And I was worried, as I said, about the size, the bulk, and you know whether it's just going to sit there uh, sticking out like a sore thumb. But it really looks good. It melds into the community. It's the sort of thing that we should be looking for. It's the architecture. Um, it's a little different than uh, some of the apartment buildings we're seeing. And I, I really hope that uh, folks can take that to heart as they start to look at how we deal with live work areas in some of, especially if we're going to end up dealing with more infill, as, which is a possibility. So that's my comment. Um, motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Any objections? No. We are adjourned. Thank you. Rachel, well done. Good job. <laughs>